high school football fans. Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts, a clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Welcome you to Mitchell Athletic Complex here in Uniondale, Long Island, where tonight the Varsity Media Sports Network presents this Catholic AAA championship game featuring the second-seeded Gales of Iona Prep and the top-seeded Friars of St. Anthony's. Today's championship game is brought to you by Catholic Health, Maspeth Federal Savings, and Long Island Elite Football. Good evening, everyone. Dylan Butler here with Pat Godfrey. Game three of three, and it is the main event between two of the top teams, not just in the Catholic Football League, but in the entire state of New York. Dare I say, in the tri-state. The Gales of Iona Prep, they come in with a record of 9-2. and two. They open the season with a loss Pat to Archbishop Hoban, their only other loss at home to St. Anthony's, 48-42. In the mix there were two wins over Stepanak, including in the semifinals. And oh, by the way, a win over Don Bosco Prep. St. Anthony's, they come in with a record of 9-1, a perfect 7-0 in the Catholic Football League. They beat Chaminade twice this season, lost a crazy game to St. Joe's of Montvale, 63-49 to under the lights there at Rutgers University. And they've run the table ever since getting back to the Catholic Football Championship game for the first time since 2017. Yeah, Dylan, you know, I remember being here a year ago, sitting watching Iona win the AAA title over Monsignor Farrell and talking about how it looked like St. Anthony's on paper was the second best team in the state that year. I think there's been a lot of people anxiously awaiting this matchup since they met in a classic up in New Rochelle during the regular season in which St. Anthony's won a close one. I think the rematch should definitely live up to the billing here tonight. If you're looking for star power, if you're looking for the best high school football that the greater New York area has to offer, well, you've come to the right place. Varsity Media here at Mitchell Field. Iona Prep, they come off a 41 to 28 win over Stepanak in that game. Johnny Shepard was 19 of 25 for 217 yards, a touchdown, an interception as well. Had 17 carries for 146 and two touchdowns. Colin O'Garro, 16 carries for 112 and two touchdowns. Adonde Nartley, the transfer from Horace Mann, had an interception. Teron Johnson had a pick six and another rivalry win for Iona Prep. A huge one. On the other side, you see those guys there in the black uniforms. They also had a rivalry win a week ago, beating Chaminade for the second time this season. That was a 41-16 win. Dante Torres in that one was 12 of 19 for 248 yards and three touchdowns. Had 13 carries for 85 yards and a score. And how about that combination of running the football between Darius Morant and Frank Ruda? Morant, 20 carries for 143. 
and a touchdown. Ruta 10 of 91 for a touchdown. And K.J. Duff, five receptions for 114 and a touchdown as well. Defensively, Jaden Platt led the way with 11 tackles. And Kenyon Miles and Thomas Mackle with an interception apiece. Let's take a look at the players to watch for the Gales of Iona Prep. And it's a pretty simple one for them. They've run the football so well this year. And it is all about Colin O'Garro. O'Garro, man, it's funny, Pat. You look back a year ago, he was big in the championship game in the final stretch drive of the year. But he missed the first half of the season with a high ankle sprain. We didn't see the best of a Colin O'Garro. And perhaps that's the reason why maybe he's not as recruited as he should be. Uh, Joe Spagnolo, the Iona Prep coach, says he thinks he's the most underrated and under-recruited player in the Catholic Football League, and he has been massive for the Gales this season. Really, you could argue, maybe the best running back in the league. Yeah, Colin O'Gara has come on incredibly strong this year. You know, just look at his stats. He's averaging close to 10 yards a carry with close to 1,300 yards on the season plus 19 total touchdowns. I mean, that production is just off the charts. Looking at him on paper, you know, 6'1", 210, you'd think that'd be a perfect prototype for an FBS program. Unfortunately for Colin, maybe not getting that level of recruitment, but hey, he's got a bunch of FCS schools calling. And you know what, Colin, I can tell you firsthand, sometimes those FBS schools are wrong. You gotta just go prove them wrong yourself. So he's a guy who could really thrive at whatever level he winds up at. And then, you know, you turn the page over to Zion Moultrie Goddard. A little banged up tonight with an ankle injury, so we're going to see how he's doing earlier on in this game. But if you, you're just talking about production, Zion, one of the most productive defensive players in all of New York State, over 100 tackles, committed to Syracuse, and he's just been a freaking workhorse on both sides of the ball since he joined this program. A huge different maker, difference maker for Iona Prep, and he's going to look to finish off his career with another AAA title. At Joe Spagnolo, the Gales coach said, Zion Moultrie Goddard and Kieran Connolly, both parts, big parts of their linebacking core are game time decisions. Certain, certainly something that we need to keep an eye out for this game. For St. Anthony's, it's the cast of characters, an explosive offense, and they've had so many game changers this season. But being the championship game that it is, we're going to shout out K.J. Duff on the offensive side. What a job he's done all year long as the leading receiver. If not for an injury that sidelines him for a handful of games, probably the leading receiver in the Catholic Football League. We'll take a quick break. We'll return for more of the pregame here for Mitchell Athletic Complex. You're watching this CHSFL Triple A championship right here in the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all the ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your
We welcome you back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Let's welcome in the third member of our broadcast team, John Perez, with more on this showdown. Road to a perfect season is never easy, and neither is winning a championship. And boy, does St. Anthony know that better than any team in the Catholic League looking for their first title in just under a decade. And St. Anthony's comes in with a perfect record. But how did they get here? Well, let's set the scene. Let's go back to week eight up at Archbishop Stepanak up in Westchester after St. Anthony's took a 21-0 lead. They gave up 21 points, and Stepanak had an opportunity to take the lead as Stepanak lined up for the field goal, and Ian Strong blocks the field goal. Jaden Jenkins takes the loose ball to the house for the exciting Friar victory. That secured the number one seed for St. Anthony's. And that's important because as you look at the bracket, St. Anthony's, the number one seed, gets home field advantage throughout the tournament. And because of that, they don't have to face Iona Prep and Stepanak. And that's been one of the biggest hurdles for St. Anthony's over the last couple of years. But as they come into the bench, they're ready to go. A perfect season on the line. Guys, we'll send it back up to you. Thanks, John. And yeah, it's been a razor thin race to the top here in the Catholic Football League. It was that close between these top three teams. To emerge though here in the championship game, it is St. Anthony's and Iona Prep. It is yet the latest of what has been some epic battles between these two teams. Our John Perez spoke with players from both teams about what has emerged as an unbelievable rivalry. St. Anthony's Iona Prep has become the best matchup over the last two years in the You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts. A clash of styles, out to talk if you love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey here with you. Moments away from the Catholic Triple A Championship. Iona was in this game a year ago, as Pat mentioned earlier, defeating Monsignor Farrell for the Triple A Championship. That was a 49 to 15 win. And what a day a Johnny Shepard had there. It really feels like, Pat, any big moment, any big win, Shepard's got his imprint on all of them. In that game, he was 18 of 20 for 251 yards and three touchdowns. He had 10 carries for 72 yards and two scores. O'Garro rushed for 79 yards and a touchdown. Remember Justin Jolie? What a game he had as well. 
How about this? Five carries for 73 yards, five receptions for 73 yards, Justin and a touchdown Jolie. both ways. You bring up Justin Jolie. He's actually a uh, freshman All-America candidate at UConn right now, having an exceptional freshman year and contributing right off the bat for that program. But, uh, I mean, hey, there's a lot of guys playing out here tonight that have had a huge impact on both of these respective programs. It's going to feel real weird calling Iona and St. Anthony's games without Dante Torres and Johnny Shepard, for instance, next year. Here we go. The Catholic AAA Championship is underway. St. Anthony's ball coming out, and they are led as they have been for the last couple of years by the six foot four gunslinger out of Massapequa, Dante Torres. 69% of his passes have been complete. A ridiculous number. 2,000. Game would be the health status of Zion Moultrie Goddard. Appears that he's out there starting for Iona right now. Torres, short pass. And a nice gain out to the 40 yard line by 84, Alex Mengi. And you can see quickly St. Anthony's looking to utilize tempo. They get a first down. They're quickly out there. No huddle. Let's go. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Another run this time towards that right side. And good gang tackling by St. Anthony, or by Iona to push Morant back. Really nice job by Iona there. Looked like number nine, Rocco Portante. The linebacker was up there in the front helping with that stop. Only a gain of one, second and nine from the 40 yard line. Torres slings it. Oh, nearly intercepted. The intended target was Ian Strong. And that was number six, Kieran Connolly on the pass breakup. Another guy we were watching very closely early in this game because he was dealing with a, a couple injury issues coming from that Stepanak game. Huge play right there on second down. Third and nine. Torres back to pass. Look out. Pressure comes. Avoids it. Torres. And he's caught from behind. And there he is again. You saw zero in there. That's Capri Martin. I think Connolly was in on that tackle as well. Capri Martin, you know, one of the most athletic nose tackles that I've seen in a while at the high school level. He's a wrestling champion also, committed to Villanova. And him, alongside number 42, Victor Hutnot, get it done right there. There's the punt. It's fielded at about the 26-yard line. And now the Gales will get to get their offense onto the field. And as they have all year, and another one of those stories within a story between these two teams, the dueling quarterbacks, it is a Johnny Shepard leading his Gales onto the field. The old Dominion commit, you see his numbers, 63% completion rating, has thrown for just shy of 2,300 yards, 21 touchdowns. Second straight year, he's become the only player in Westchester County history for those 2,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards. Johnny Shepard gotten so efficient throwing the ball. It's been a huge improvement in his game year over year. Hands off, and it's O'Garo, the senior from New Rochelle, trying to push forward 17 touchdowns on the year for Colin O'Garo. And O'Garo is a guy who, who likes to bring out his best when the lights are at their brightest. Had over 200 yards versus Bosco, 200-plus all-purpose versus Stepanak. They're going to need him to have a huge night here. Shepard comes this side, finds Ethan Acevedo, and greeting Acevedo with some physicality was Kenyon Miles. Kenyon Miles, just another one of those studs out there for St. Anthony's Villanova commit. They had him playing on the offensive side of the ball prior to this year, but it's hits like this, his ability to fly up in space and make open field tackles, which are why Joe Minucci is utilizing Miles on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, we saw him start the year as one of those great receiving threats. He's since moved to that secondary. He's been huge there. Third and four. Shepard. Oh, sidearm look. I love the ability to change his angles, but that pass was incomplete. The intended target there. Dylan Yorgovanu looks like 
the junior, number 11. And that, that's not a pass that you often see a Johnny Shepard miss. So the Gales go three and out. After the last time these teams met, didn't think I'd be seeing a lot of three and outs. <laughs> And there's the punt, and it's fielded as the Friars look to get going offensively. <coughs> Let's meet their starters offensively, the Friars. We mentioned Torres, of course, before. You've got Ruda, the running back. Your wide receivers are Matos, Longo, Mengi, and Duff. Up front, it's Chanchuli, Novelli, Dowling, Oliva, and Murphy for head coach Joe Minucci. Nucci's in his fourth season, a 1999 graduate of St. Anthony's. Friars ball, first and 10 from their own 31-yard line. No score, 822 left in this first quarter in the Catholic AAA Championship. Frank Ruder, the halfback in the game. He's had a, had a great year, averaging over nine yards a carry. Torres fakes the handoff. He's chased. And look at the escapability by Dante Torres. Cuts it inside. Dante Torres is finally pulled down from behind, just shy of the 25-yard line. Dante Torres gets a lot of love for his arm, but this part of his game is what makes him so invaluable for St. Anthony's. He hits that edge, gets a great block out there from Frank Ruda. There were nine Gales who missed. There was finally one who caught him from behind. First and 10 from the 25-yard line. Hand off. And not much there. There is a flag, though. This likely will be a face mask penalty. It should be on Sakar Morris, the junior from Wappingers Falls, the defensive end. That's a tough break here. Iona, you think you got him bottled up? And likely going to be 15. Well, they went the five-yard variety. So not a personal foul. It makes it a dangerous Friars offense. A few more yards to operate. Torres, quick out. Finding Timmy Longo. Big play, Longo. Longo is pulled down just shy of the end zone. That was a touchdown saving tackle by Adonde Nartley. And there's an, is there another flag? Yes, there is, over by the 20 yard line. And this will come back a holding penalty against the Friars. It seemed at times this year that the only thing that could really hold back this St. Anthony's offensive attack is themselves in this situation, giving back the yards they gained from the face mask penalty and restarting first down. This will be a first and 14 from the 29-yard line. Torres, another quick out for Longo. He is wrapped up by Nartley. Let's take a look at the starting defense for the Gales of Iona Prep up front. Their three linemen are Morris, Martin, and Hicks. Your linebackers are Connolly, Lapolitano, Moultrie, Goddard, and Hutenot. Your corners are Codrington and Johnson, and your safeties are Nartley and Walden. Hand off, there goes Ruda, and he's tackled just shy of the 26, or just shy of the 25 at the 26. Always important for St. Anthony's early on in these games to establish the run. So many weapons on the outside, but they love to work their offense through those running backs. Torres, the protection is there. There's a holding penalty, so this one, whatever Dante does here, and he just scampers out of bounds. This will come back. Another holding penalty against the Friars. 
That's one of the challenges as an offensive lineman of having a quarterback like Dante Torres who can extend plays the way that he can. You know, sometimes you got to hang in there for a lot longer than you expected, blocking at a different angle than you expected, and those uh, incidental holdings can sometimes become collateral damage. Holding against the Friars. And you can see the metaphorical steam coming <laughs> out of Joe Minucci's ears on the sideline as his offense moves backward. That was in his breath with the cold <laughs> weather here tonight. So they're backed up now. This is a third and 26 from the 44-yard line. All that good that Torres did scrambling has almost been negated by back-to-back -back penalties. Torres... Over the middle, finds his man. That's K.J. Duff. And Duff is knocked down. A little bit of a shoulder challenge there at the 17-yard line. So K.J. Duff picks up, looks like, about 24 on third and 26. So they're going to have fourth and two right here. Looks like St. Anthony's going to go for it by the early indication. Could be a Caden situation. And that's what it appeared. So actually, Iona call the timeout. They want to talk it over. In our conversation with Joe Spagnolo, that's one of the things he said. The challenge of facing a St. Anthony's team with so many weapons, he's like, look, you know, how, where do you stop them? How do you try to stop them, right? And even offensively, he said, listen, you know, we're going to, I need all 75 plays on his call sheet, right? He needs every bullet that he has to try to stop a high-flying St. Anthony's team. And that's just the inherent challenge of playing them for any high school defensive coordinator, you know. And even if you're Iona Prep, chances are you don't feel that great about your sixth or seventh defensive back. And St. Anthony's is the type of team that's going to make that guy step up to the plate, you know, because the third, fourth, fifth receiver at a St. Anthony's is a guy who's probably a number one at most public schools. So incredible challenge for Iona. And this feels like a really important fourth down here early on in this game because one thing we know about this series is – Every single possession really, really matters. Off the Iona timeout, fourth and three. Trips left for the Friars. There's a handoff, trying to run right and stopped, it looks like, was Ruda. I believe Morris was the first one in, 55 but a turnover on downs for the Friars. Great job by Zakar Morris stepping up in a big fourth down situation. You'll see 55 out there setting a great edge. And then the second to the party was number 43 for Iona, which is, uh, my apologies, Davin, or <coughs> uh, Sal Panzarella finishes that one off. But huge, huge stop for Iona on that early fourth down. So the Gales take over on the 21-yard line. Hand off O'Garo. Big run down the right side. Gets the first down and more. And a late flag as well. O'Garo, a guy who's just been coming on so strong this year. Having a hell of a season. The offers are Colgate, Bryant, Bucknell, and Dartmouth. Both of Colin O'Garo's parents went to Dartmouth. So it's pretty intelligent lineage as well. <laughs> wow, they've really hit the genetic la lottery, Colin. Seems like there's perhaps an injury to one of the officials on that far, far side. One of the reasons why there's a delay, but you do see that flag down near that 40-yard line. Some clapping there by the Gales. This will be a face mask against... St. Anthony's. So this is a rivalry game, that is for sure. It is battled with ferocity. There is a great deal of respect. But listen, when you get between the lines, man, it's hard to control that emotion. Especially in this type of environment, championship game, your whole family, all your friends are here, everybody you know watching at home on Varsity Media. These guys are aware of the bright lights and are just doing everything they can to leave it out there on the field. First and 10 from the 37-yard line. There's Shepard going back. He's got a deep look going downfield. 
And that's intercepted. And a flag thrown as well. Jaden Jenkins, what a play. You might remember him. And wave off the flag. It was Dowdy, the intended target. And Double J, Jaden Jenkins with the INT. This adjustment to the ball is just so impressive. And, and Friar fans remember Jaden Jenkins from his huge touchdown to win over Stepanak in the closing seconds here. Locates the ball perfectly, keeps his eyes up. That's textbook defensive back play. It looked like the officials actually just kind of to not throw the flag, but kind of get the placement, right? And the beanbag and ended up losing everything there. <laughs> So first and 10 for St. Anthony's from their own 15-yard line. That play that you referred to, we showed that before. That's why St. Anthony's was the top seed. That's why they were home for Shamada, not up at Iona in the semifinals. Torres fakes, and he'll make a deep shot. Looking for Duff. That is complete. A flag is thrown. Duff, see you later. K.J. Duff in the end zone. Touchdown, St. Anthony's. K.J. Duff, are you kidding me? Big time players make big time plays in the biggest moments. Here on Championship Saturday, he just goes up and mosses Terrence Walden on that 50-50 ball. And then once he gets an inch of space, he's gone. Six nothing Friars. 85 yards to the house. It'll be a defensive pass interference, obviously. That penalty is declined. <laughs> and just a testament to who K.J. Duff is, right? You know, you interfere with him, that's not enough. K.J. Duff was the first freshman to ever start on the St. Anthony's varsity football team. The PAT is up. And it is good. So St. Anthony's draws first blood here in the Catholic AAA Championship. The Friars lead this one 7 nothing with 5.14 left in the first quarter. You're watching the Catholic AAA Championship presented by Catholic Health right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York High school sports. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Dylan Butler, Pat Godfrey here. Clearly the penalty was awarded. It was a short kickoff. And Iona will get things going inside their own 20. But it was KJ Duff a moment ago to open the scoring for St. Anthony's. This is just kind of what K.J. Duff does right here. Goes full Randy Moss status. And just thing of beauty right there. His quarterback, Dante Torres, already off to a hot start. Three for five, 119 yards and a touchdown. Just another day at the office for Dante Torres. And K.J. Duff making it look easy. The Gales start off on their own 18-yard line. First and 10. Iona looking to respond. It's Shepard rolling. Look at Shepard with this run. And he's tackled by Ian Strong. And usually when you're tackled by Ian Strong, you stay tackled by Ian Strong. Let's take a look at the starters offensively for Iona Prep. Joining Johnny Shepard, you've got O'Garro. Your receivers are Dowdy, Acevedo, Ira Govenu, and Senator. Up front, you've got Byrne, Pauletti, Schutz Langendorf, and P.J. Prisgoda. Oh, yeah, let's not forget Jorge Ruiz at right tackle, who might be one of the best offensive linemen in this league. There goes O'Garro past the 30-yard line. They love running the ball out there to that left side behind 
Paul Letty and Byrne. Byrne himself, a, uh, a big-time prospect, is only a sophomore at 6'5", 285. Has a bevy of different FBS offers. BC, Pitt, Syracuse, Rutgers, UConn, you name it. Absolute stud out there at left tackle. Another flag is thrown. And, you know, you think about, as it's a false start on the offense, you think about a Rowan Byrne, right, at 6'5", 285 at left tackle. And you just salivate at the thought of he and Preston Carey for St. Anthony's just going at it, man, for three more years. <laughs> Spagnola joked, yeah, they've already exchanged pleasantries, the two big guys who will both be national recruits. That is certain. O'Garro is pulled down from behind. Joe Joe DiCero, the leader, the heartbeat of the defense. And let's meet that St. Anthony's defense now up front. You've got Mackle, Carey, Dunn, and Cook. Your linebackers are strong, DiCero, Goldstein, your corners are Platt and Jenkins, and your safeties are Miles and Spina. Jojo DeCero has just really been the heartbeat of this St. Anthony's defense all year long. We know they love to run a lot of their defenses through that middle linebacker spot, and he's just been a uh, hub of productivity. Second and 15. And again, the Friars are stout up front, stopping a Johnny Shepard. A little flex there by Griffin Goldstein. This St. Anthony's D is pumped up right now, playing some inspired football. They've got Iona in third and 13. Now the tough part is getting off the field because as many talented weapons are on the St. Anthony's offense, maybe just as many available for a Johnny Shepard in situations like this. You remember that regular season game at Mara Field when Shepard's rolling around late. He's nine yards away from a touchdown. It was Dante Vidaro who made the winning sack. Vidaro got hurt, and Goldstein got his position back. Shepard, quick out. And the reception was by Acevedo, but he is shy of the first down marker. Acevedo just shy, does a really good job getting north-south and he gets his hands on the ball, but I think it was Spina there with the tackle. Timmy Longo deep for St. Anthony's. This is a fourth and two from the 39-yard line. Ooh, and a false start against the Gales. Iona had a fantastic punter in Sean O'Neill. The senior, he's committed to New Hampshire, injured himself playing soccer. So now your kicker and punter is Sam Bassesi, the junior from New Canaan, who's, by the way, a four-and-a-half star recruit. Fair catch is called. Ooh, a little bit of contact there. I don't think it was called, though. It'll be St. Anthony's ball as Longo makes the fair catch just outside his own 40-yard line. Really good field position for St. Anthony's. Coming back out here. Looking to back up what they did on the last drive. And jump out in front of this potent Iona offensive attack. Final two minutes here of this first quarter. And it's St. Anthony's with a 7-0 lead, courtesy of the 85-yard touchdown reception by K.J. Duff. Duff's ninth touchdown of the season. Torres hands off. The run goes to the right side, and the Gales are stout up front. Morant, the ball carrier, but he doesn't get much. In fact, it looks like he'll be hit for a loss. Yeah, no, nothing going there. And, you know, for St. Anthony's, they're really at their best in the running game when they're getting north-south right away. Last couple of times they've run it, the DNs, Morris and Hicks doing a good job of stringing things out. Torres, a ton of time. Still scrambles. Torres. And he'll just high step it out of bounds. You could see the pressure coming. And we saw a few different things there from Dante, too, where the little hesitation, right, maybe draw out one of the defenders. It looked like he was chased there by Jalen Hicks, the junior who's got offers from Syracuse and UConn. You know, Torres doing a really good job getting creative back there. One thing to keep an eye on, though, 
Kind of holding that ball like a loaf of bread. Yeah. A little bit dangerous. Third and ten. Dante goes deep. Looking for strong this time. And really good defending. The pass was long. But you got to credit Teron Johnson, the sophomore from the Bronx, who went stride for stride with the Rutgers bound commit. Teron Johnson, great man coverage here against the six foot five Ian Strong. Johnson, a guy who's a stud in his own right. I was part of a group that brought him down to Clemson last summer, and I saw him lock up some of the, the top wide receivers at that camp. So he's a guy to keep your eye on. Only a sophomore, but will you know likely get some legitimate Division One interest in years to come. Why'd you bring him to Clemson? Uh, part of my charity about <laughs> you. <laughs> oh my, the ball bounced. And this, a big play by the Gales, capitalizing there on a miscue on the snap. It's a good job by Xavier Wallace to make the play. Watch it again. Yeah, this right here, you know, just one of the kind of giveaways that can't happen on Championship Saturday. Fortunate that that isn't scooped and scored by Iona, but... Johnny Shepard and company going to have great field position coming out the gate as they look to tie this one up. Yeah, they start off at the St. Anthony's 25-yard line. A shade over a minute left here in the first quarter. Acevedo in motion. Handoff is faked. There goes Shepard. Runs it to the left side. Eludes a tackler and will get a first down just outside the 10. St. Anthony is fortunate to trip up a Johnny Shepard right here as he gets a full head of steam. You'll see he's following his offensive lineman, Dan Pauletti, who does a good job pulling around the edge. And once number three gets a full head of steam, it's a, a, a tough guy to bring down. Yeah, Pauletti, the junior, that blue collar worker. Shepard fakes the handoff, goes up the middle, loses the football. It's fumbled in the end zone. Who has it? No call has been indicated yet by the officials. This is gonna and be you can point. see the wrestling match for that ball. And the Friars have come away with it. You saw Mikey Senator... And they actually called it a touchdown. So the fumble happened. It was Senator wrestling for the football with Jaden Platt. An advantage Senator. He wins it. Six points on the board for Iona. M Mikey Senator, just a heads-up play. Diving on that one. Very fortunate. It didn't go out of bounds, forcing a touchback. But, hey, counts as six points. Chalk it up. It's the second straight week. The PAT is blocked, and man, how good is St. Anthony's blocking PATs and field goal attempts? Let's take another look at this Shepard run and fumble, and this will be a good vantage point. A Johnny Shepard on the QB power, right up the middle, and boom, gets hit by number two, Kenyon Miles, the Villanova commit forcing the fumble. Fortunate that Mikey Sanator is there to jump on the ball for an Iona touchdown. Iona had a similar situation a week ago where it was an O'Garro fumble that was recovered in the end zone as well. So back-to-back -back weeks in the biggest of games, the Gales have recovered a fumble in the end zone to get six points. You know, when even your fumbles are productive, that's the hallmark <laughs> of a good team, Dylan. There's an incredible championship history between these two teams. We can maybe get to that in a moment if we can you go back the, this is the first meeting since 2010 when St. Anthony's won 41 to 23 you remember Charlie Rafa the QB he had himself a day 7 of 10 for 255 yards and 4 touchdowns as the Gales are set here to kick off Line drive kick. It's fielded on a bounce at about the five yard line. Straight up the gut. Big time return for the Friars. That's Darius Morant right there. 
one one part of that two-headed monster running back for the Friars. It gives them great field position as they look to answer the Iona touchdown. And here's that look again. 2010, you go back two years before that. What a game by Jeffrey Mack, man. Just shy of 400 yards, seven touchdowns. The Gales captured their fourth Catholic title and their first AAA t crown. You go back to 2005. And what a win there for the Friars. Chris Enuzel had 14 carries, 103 yards and two touchdowns. That was the Friars' fifth straight Triple A championship. First and 10 for the Friars from the 42 yard line. Handoff up the middle. And that is going to be tough for the Friars to try to get anything up the middle as Iona is just so stout there. You saw Moultrie Goddard, eight, in on the tackle. He also hobbles off as well. Yeah, interesting to see Zion Moultrie Goddard managing that ankle in injury he's such a clutch key guy for Iona in stopping the uh the ground game especially so as they look to contain Frank Ruda Darius Morant having number eight out on the field is going to be big for the Gales yeah suffered that ankle injury against Stepanak did not return against the Crusaders I asked Joe Spagnolo about him at practice and he said he was present at practice didn't say that he performed. I said, I get it. I get it, coach. That's the end of one here from Mitchell Athletic Complex, and it is 7-6. Friars with the lead. You're watching this Catholic AAA championship game presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. I'll tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you get for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge that. Because effort is between you and you. Effort ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Second quarter. Dante Torres, a deep shot, looking for Longo. And in and out of Timmy Longo's hands. The coverage there was by Nartley. Dante Nardi right there was just kind of sitting underneath that one. Let it slip by, and Timmy Longo almost had the spectacular catch along the sideline. Just, just misses. Let's send it down to the field for our John Perez. Guys, when we spoke to Iona Prep head coach Joe Spagnolo earlier in the week, we asked him what his message was going into this current game, and he said that for this group of seniors, he really lambasted on the fact of this is your final chance to go out a two-time champion. And he wasn't dismissing the championship that Iona Prep won last year, but he said, hey, you're never going to get this time back. This is an opportunity for your legacies to go down as some of the best Iona Prep athletes in school history. Guys? Ian Strong, how many times, Pat, are you told as a quarterback, don't throw it back ac across your body to midfield? You know, those I, think, I think the asterisk is if you've got Ian Strong uh, out there looking to make the catch. Exactly. Those rules don't apply to people like Dante Torres, who just rips this one. And uh, you, you see big number five go up for it, uses every bit of that 6'5 frame. And that's what's so dangerous about this St. Anthony though. they got a million guys that can beat you in a lot of different ways. Teron Johnson tried to go for the INT, but he was then beaten over the top, and Strong was able to get to the 20-yard line. First and 10, quick out. There is K.J. Duff. He's got a blocker in Strong, and he's downed at about the 8-yard line. Dylan, I'm glad you highlighted Strong out there in the perimeter blocking. That's one of the huge advantages of having so much size at the wide receiver position for St. Anthony's. Those bubble screens are infinitely more effective because they have great blockers on the edge. 
First and goal to the edge. Ruda lowers the shoulder. And for those who didn't see that, number eight, Zion Moultrie Goddard shot the gap, had a step in there, and I thought he was going to make the TFL for a second, but kind of came up gimpy on that bad ankle, playing a, uh, playing a factor early here at Metro Field. Second and goal from the four-yard line. Torres calls his own number. If that's a blocker, touchdown St. Anthony's. He followed his running back, Frank Ruda, into the end zone. Dante Torres making some noise early with his feet as well. Punches this one in. And you'll see I mentioned it on the last play once again here. Number eight, Zion Moultrie Goddard, who usually makes that stop right there. Just a step behind where he normally might be. And that's all Dante Torres needs to punch that one in, go up by the score, uh, touchdown. And then you saw Ruda there blow up Johnson as well, just making sure that Dante has got a free passage in to the end zone. He didn't use an easy pass. It's never easy against these Gales, but did find his way in for his 10th rushing touchdown of the season. Interesting move here. Looks like St. Anthony is going for two to try and go up by two scores in this game. Torres rolls right, slings it, end zone, oh yeah. There it is, it kind of helps when you got a six foot five receiver and KJ Duff, jump ball, KJ's got it. Yeah, just kind of close your eyes, get some air under it. <laughs> 15 to six, a little bit of an unorthodox score line, but St. Anthony's has it, another look. Yeah, I love this call right here by Coach Joe Minucci to go for two. This this point, they're separated by nine, and that becomes a very valuable two-point conversion. Already in this game, Dante Torres, four of nine for 174 yards. He's also got four carries, 65 yards. He's got a passing touchdown and a rushing touchdown. And, you know, Torres never wastes any time. Getting after the stat sheet. Already real impressive, and we're barely into the second quarter. How about K.J. Duff as well? Two receptions for 97 yards, as well as that two-point conversion. And Ian Strong, two receptions for 70 yards. His coming out party, if you will, offensively, you know, we did that first game, and we didn't see him against Chaminade, and I think a, lot, a little bit of that is maybe knowing at that time you don't need him against Chaminade, but also knowing that St. Joe's Montvale hasn't seen him either as a receiver. And, you know, on the banks of the rare tan where, he'll, where he will play his college football, uh, what a welcoming sort of party that was uh, for Ian Strong. We knew how good he was defensively. We found out that night how good he is on the offensive side of the ball as well. Yeah, and, you know, it's really uncanny. You never hear about St. Anthony's Friars playing both sides of the football. It's incredibly rare. But Ian Strong, just one of those special type athletes that has the ability to do so within this program. He's, he's been a standout at linebacker all year long, flies to the football and always has his nose near, near the ball. And then just on the offensive side, huge difference maker this year. And the Gales know all too well as well in that St. Anthony's win in New Rochelle in week four. Strong had 13 receptions for 236 yards and three touchdowns. There's a first down conversion as Shepard goes to that far sideline, finding Irigovanu. Dylan Yorgovanu does a really good job here. The six foot tall junior getting out to the edge, past the sticks, and just moving the chains for Iona. Speaking of easy passes, Irigovanu from Middle Village, one of a few players getting across that Whitestone Bridge early every morning. Here comes Shepard, fakes the handoff, and he just finds safe passage into his own sideline. I think having a Johnny Shepard as a signal caller is just such a comfort for Joe Spagnolo. Even though you're down a little bit early here, Johnny has been here and done that. He's come back against St. Anthony's before, and there's a palpable sense of calm on the Iona sideline because you got number three calling the shots. 
Spags, a 1998 grad of Iona Prep in his seventh season as head coach at his alma mater. Second and eight, Shepard calls his own number, runs down the right side, gets, it would appear, the first down, and he does. It was hard to see because obviously realizing that 6'3", 230 is running at you, if you are holding this... <laughs> If you are holding the sticks down there, you drop and run. Self-preservation. is. You the run the game. other way. You throw the stick on the field at him, I think. You don't want that job anymore. Yep. So Shepard, a first down run. 20 and 3 as a starter at Iona Prep is a Johnny Shepard. Johnny just been a winner through and through, following up his, his older brother, Kadir Shepard, who was a great, Defensive lineman, a starter at Ole Miss, and a, a Canadian League football player, and a Johnny just next in line in this great athletic family. O'Garrow, man, he knows how to protect that football hand over hand. Old school there for Colin O'Garrow. He gets to about the 44 yard line. DiCiaro with the tackle. Hey, you know, covering both points of the ball might not be the most popular thing <laughs> amongst young running backs, but if you tune into our AA1 title game, you'll know that <laughs> ball security is paramount at all times. Second and four from the 43-yard line. Shepard again, hands off to O'Garro, turns the corner, gets the first down, and he's pushed finally out of bounds. Left guard Dan Pauletti once again out in front of that one, kind of clearing the way. Pulling guards, doing a really good job for Iona here, opening up some holes. And yeah, they are big up front, that is for sure. Rowan Byrne, that left tackle we mentioned, just a, a puppy, just the sophomore, 6'5", 285. Pauletti that you just referenced, 6'1", 265. Schultz Langendorf, 6'3", 315. That's only three of the five linemen. Here comes Shepard now. Right up the gut. Another first down run. And he gets out of bounds just shy of the 20-yard line. To continue, DJ Prisgoda, 6'2", 320. And Jorge Ruiz, the Georgetown commit, 6'4", 290. So, you know, by my head math, they're averaging about 295 pounds across the offensive line. And one of the reasons that's so impressive that's uh, about as big as the offensive line was at Clemson my entire career. <laughs> so, well done, Iona. And really, so many of those guys are back, right? Byrne, Paul Letty. On that left side, they're just a sophomore and a junior between them. No doubt, great building blocks for the future of that O-line. And such a great O-line tradition here kind of being led by Jorge Ruiz, the Georgetown commit, who has just been a fantastic leader for Coach Spagnolo, maybe the best offensive lineman in the league. A three-year starter. Second and seven for the Gales on the 20-yard line. O'Garro, the handoff. And he plows forward for a few more. Looks like that was big Preston Carey. First time we're calling his name on that tackle. Yeah, speaking of big, <laughs> Preston Carey comes in at 6'5", 270 as just a freshman. So if you're wondering why he has LSU, A&M, Rutgers, Georgia, Tennessee, that's why. <laughs> that's one of the fun things, too, about this game, and we'll get to that more, I think, after this play. Third and five from the 18-yard line. Shepard. Rolls, st still has it, goes end zone. Was that intercepted? It was. There he is again, Kenyon Miles. Kenyon Miles has been all over the place. If you're wondering why is it that Kenyon Miles isn't playing receiver, well, guess what? He is playing receiver. He's just doing it on the other side of the ball. He, he prefers to catch a Johnny Shepard's passes tonight. Oh, and what a play by the senior. What a look as well from Matt McCower brown down field level. You see the little tip. And then Miles coming up with the pick. What a play for the Friars. 
Just a huge stop there. Stymie me whatever momentum that Iona had going. And then give the ball back to your offense, which is just on absolute fire right now, being led by your senior Dante Torres. You want to scan that QR code at the bottom left of your screen to download the Yes Network's Emmy Award winning Yes app now. Stream Nets and Yankees games, high schools, games, lifestyle shows, podcasts, and more. The Yes Network app. So 17. Nick Matos makes the catch. You saw Nick Matos with a uh, tremendous 60-something yard touchdown last week up against Chaminade. Yet another one of those guys who Dante Torres likes to get involved, usually going up against a second or third corner. And that presents some good opportunities for number 17. Broken play there. As Torres, and you can see there, look how quickly he starts coaching up Morant, right? Like you, you were in this spot, you should have been over here. So it's now a third and six for the Friars. Torres, good protection. Ducks under. And look at the speed. Dante Torres, pass midfield. He's got blockers up the field. Get out of the way. Dante Torres, touchdown St. Anthony's. 76 yards from the senior QB. And this guy makes a living throwing the ball. Over 3,000 passing yards on the season. Over 30 passing touchdowns on the season. But right here, he said, you know what? I could do it both ways. He gets a crease. He hits it. And then he's going to follow his block. A really great job of downfield blocking by number five, Ian Strong. And Dante Torres takes that all the way for the St. Anthony's touchdown. Incredible stuff by Dante Torres. Extending the St. Anthony's lead. And the PAT is also up and good. So St. Anthony's a 22 to six lead with 614 left in the second quarter. Fans, if you're thinking of buying or selling a home, look no further than the Schwartzberg Butner team. Barbie and Sue have 20 years of experience and will help guide you through the process seamlessly. They will make the process simple and easy to navigate and will do it with patience and expertise. Let Barbie and Sue guide you home. Yeah, Dylan, I can speak firsthand of my wife being a real estate agent in the city. There's nothing more important than find that perfect partner when you're looking to find you know, the perfect home for you and your family, sometimes the biggest investment you'll ever make. So Barbie and Sue, just great people out there helping Long Islanders get situated in their perfect home. And Dante Torres found the home in the end zone as well. What an incredible run by Torres. And I think what makes that so impressive, among other things, Pat, is that that wasn't a design play, right? Like he was looking for something downfield, pocket collapses, and he just makes a play, man. He just has a different skill set. I'm, I'm telling you, he, I've been around a lot of great athletes at the quarterback position, and he stands up against anybody I've seen in person. You go back to last year, and it was Jaden Codrington ending Dante Torres' junior season. He had that interception in the semifinal game in the second overtime, and from that moment, Dante Torres has made it his personal journey to get beyond the semifinal game and get to this game and finish what he thought he had a good chance of doing as a junior. Oh, that, that St. Anthony's team has been manifesting tonight since they got bounced in the playoffs last year. They remember that pain, and they're eager to inflict it upon the Gales here. And the Gales struggling right now you give up the big touchdown run by Dante Torres and now you back yourself up five yards off of that false start definitely going to have to play clean football from here on out if they hope to narrow the gap between them and the Friars but 
as we've said before, Johnny Shepard, the type of guy who can score a lot of points in a hurry. Acevedo motioned out to the right. Oh, my goodness. Another penalty. <laughs> At a point, you got to think, Will Spagnola just call timeout, just call some guys over and, like, let's talk this over. I think it's, it's getting close to that point. You know, this is really the time where you look to your seniors, your guys with the most experience to kind of settle everybody down, say, hey, you know, we've been here before. We'll be all right one play at a time. But some of these issues starting to compound a little bit on the Iona offense. So it's now a first and 20 from the 26-yard line. 6.04 left in the first half. The first half that has been virtually dominant, dominated by St. Anthony's. There goes Shepard rolling right. Finds his intended target, and that's Ethan Acevedo, the newly committed Coppin State baseball commit. So we know that he has those sure hands. Returned in the semifinals after missing three weeks to an injury. And Acevedo, the senior from the Bronx, he is just a gamer. Yeah, congratulations to Ethan on the Coppin State commitment, but been very productive all year long, close to 500 yards receiving alongside six touchdowns, and a guy that they're really going to want to get going as they hope to narrow this gap. Second and 16 from the 30-yard line, and again, it's Acevedo being motioned out. Shepard goes his way. Acevedo, there's no blockers there, so he's blown up pretty quickly. And we've been calling his name all day long today. Usually it's the Ian Strong story on defense for St. Anthony's today. Kenyon Miles, another open field tackle. Just so confident out there in space. And, you know, if you're ever questioning why he got moved over to the defensive side of the ball, his physicality tonight is, uh, is your answer. Yeah, Miles and Spina as well. Number six in on the tackle, the junior from Lindenhurst. Came into this game with 72 tackles and three sacks. So third and 17 from the 29-yard line. And as good as a Johnny Shepard is and as many receivers as he has when, as you said earlier, when you know you've got to throw it, it makes you a little bit less effective. Here is Shepard rolling, trying to get out of trouble. He's chased down by Carey. Interception at the 46-yard line. It's Spina cutting inside. And Vinny Spina back-to-back -back big plays. And all year long, Johnny Shepard has been so efficient. Only two interceptions coming into this game. But Vinny Spina reads the eyes and steps right in front. Just a great break by the safety. Only a junior, but playing out here like somebody with a lot more experience. And now St. Anthony is going to have the ball in prime position to go try and score again. Friars intercept Shepard for the third time in this first half. Again, you go back to that playoff meeting a year ago. Dante Torres threw three interceptions against the Gales. First and 10 from the Iona Prep 20. Over the middle. Oh, what a tough grab that was. Torres finding his receiver, Timmy Longo. Timmy Longo, just a short-handed senior receiver out there for St. Anthony's. And it just helps that everybody does their job on this offense. A lot of parts working in unison. And Torres pulled down from behind Napolitano with the tackle. He's moved back inside at linebacker. He played a little bit last year, but maybe those lights that we see tonight, maybe they were a little bit too bright for Napolitano, but man, has he improved this season. No doubt. Number seven, Christian Napolitano is you know one of their faster linebackers, a real contributor, especially against a passing game, but there does a good job bringing down Torres. Third and six from the 16-yard line. Dante, flag on the play. Dumps it over the middle. That's complete off the deflection to Longo. He's in the end zone, but you certainly believe this one's coming back. Yeah, let's look for the call on the field. But Second time Timmy Longo getting robbed of a really strong play. 
I'll tell you, man, Longo is just 5'9", 185, right? The senior from Northport. But he's got incredible hands. And he flies under the radar because of, like, all these other dudes, right? Like, Duff and Strong and all these other guys who get after it and have the big names. And all Timmy Longo does is make big plays. Yeah, you know, T Timmy Longo is probably a guy who's, you know, a second or third receiver in this offense. But you take him and put him on any other roster, either in the Catholic League or the Public League, and I think he's a standout all-state caliber receiver. So just another great option. Third and 20 from the 30-yard line. Torres back to pass, slings it far side. That's going to be an incomplete pass, and it was Longo again, the intended receiver. Kind of an interesting spot here, an interesting decision for Joe Minucci. You got fourth and 20 from the Iona 30-yard line, so certainly not a position in which you're going to punt. A little bit far outside of field goal range, and obviously you need 20 yards to move the chain. So kind of a tough play call here. Well, he'll go, and listen, if you get anything shy of a first down, you're still forcing the Gales to have a long field on the other side. Torres back to pass. Goes that same sideline. He's got a man. It's complete. Oh, what a turn and touchdown. <laughs> K.J. Duff. Touchdown, St. Anthony's. K.J. Duff basically just goes Randy Moss here. Too easy for him. And Dante Torres says, hey, you know, most people call this a 50-50 ball. I call it a hundred ball <laughs> when it's going to number one over there. Oh, <laughs> just, he had two defenders on skates. <laughs> just amazing and kind of shocking, in my opinion, Dylan, to see the Friars get out to this much of a lead against a really, really good Iona defense. PAT is good, and it is all St. Anthony's right now. The Friars extend their lead 29 to six with 2.59 left in this second quarter. KJ Duff having himself an incredible night. Three catches, 127 yards, two touchdowns, plus that two point conversion. And, uh, you know, really just giving the tri state area a taste of why he is such a big time recruit. So many Power Five programs desperately going after this guy. You want to get some of those looks like K.J. Duff does? Well, how about the Varsity Media recruiting video? Parents and athletes, now that the season is ending, you can order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help you stand out from the crowd. It may save money in college tuition and help you land a spot on the team. Bio section, editing effects, and music. Email jeff at varsitymedia.net by Thanksgiving and get 15% off. Do it early on Thanksgiving. I know Jeff's going <laughs> to... Want to have a nice day of football and turkey and, and, and the like. So try to get him by like 10. Don't, try not to email him around 1 or 2. And you know, guys, for, for all those high school athletes out there, you put in so much time year-round to try and perfect your skill set, try and do everything you can to gain a competitive advantage. Well, a highlight tape through Varsity Media is just another piece of that competitive advantage. You know, put your best foot forward in all things that you do. Here at Varsity Media, we love to help you do that. What Iona Prep would love to do is get in the end zone here. Uh, they're facing danger time right now. It is 29-6 inside the final three minutes. They've not found a way to stop St. Anthony's, and they've also had three interceptions to this point. Shepard looks to pass, just avoids Preston Carey. And then he's got to go down. He gets down, though, just shy, looks like, of the first down marker. Looked like Ian Strong was the closest one there to make the tackle. Yeah, one area right here where Johnny Shepard can be so dangerous. You see big number 99, Preston Carey's going to get a hand on him. Oof. But at 240, 235, number three, just too tough to bring down, able to fall forward for an eight-and-a-half-yard gain. Yeah, if he's like 185, he's going down. <laughs> <laughs> Second and one. Shepard rolls now to his right. He's got blockers. Cuts it back inside. And look at this. The cut inside. He must have thought he saw something. What he didn't see were those host of St. Anthony's tacklers. You saw Goldstein, DiChiaro, 
there for the Friars. Sam Cook also around that one. Just want to give a quick shout out to the defensive line for St. Anthony's. They've been doing a really good job of consistently applying pressure in the face of a Johnny Shepard. Thomas Mackle, Preston Carey, Tyler Dunn, and Sam Cook have all been very active here tonight. Might not show up on the stat line just yet, but certainly having a big impact. Third and one from the 46-yard line, a Johnny Shepard. And he will go deep. He's got a man downfield, a lot of contact there, and a flag is thrown. It'll be a pass interference penalty against the Chiaro, who got caught up with Dylan, Dylan Irigovanu. Yeah, that's a tough situation right there for Jojo DeCero. Dylan Yorgovano plays that wide receiver spot coming out of the slot usually, so he picks him up in one-on-one -on -one coverage, and all you can do sometimes as a linebacker is kind of get your hands up and pray that they don't catch it. Now, yeah, didn't make that look back, right, to the ball. Just kind of was almost face-guarding Ira Govanu. Exactly. If you don't get the head around, the refs are going to call that one 10 times out of 10. So first and 10 from the 39-yard line. Shepard again slings it, gets it out to about the 35-yard line. Thrown back there was Mike Senator, the senior from Somers, a two-year starter. 25 receptions, 422 yards and four touchdowns. He's another who returned to the lineup as in the semifinals after missing three weeks to injury. Here comes Shepard. Now he rolls out, looks for that first down flag. Uh, a marker, I should say. He will get to it as he's pushed out of bounds there by Spina. As we've seen on this drive so far, you know, Iona can move the ball against the St. Anthony's defense. That's not really the issue. The issue is three turnovers in the first half. You know, that I think look up on the scoreboard. These are two normally very close teams, but that turnover margin is really the difference in the game so far. Three interceptions in the first half as Shepard looks for options, still has it, slings it, has a wide open. Ethan Acevedo, and Acevedo makes the catch as Miles again brought the pain. Kenyon Miles, I'm just really blown away by how comfortable he seems playing out of the defensive backfield. This is a guy who made a living at St. Anthony's as a very, very good wide receiver. He's committed to Villanova right now to play wide receiver, but, geez, back at safety, he is flying up and he is taking people's heads off. Shepard coming into this game, we mentioned the 21 touchdowns, only two interceptions, three in this first half alone, which certainly speaks to what St. Anthony's has been able to do defensively. And when you think about St. Anthony's defensively too, right, you go back in time, they were giving up a ton of points, right? You go back to that Montvale game, St. Joe's Montvale, that was 63 points that they gave up. In that even the win over Iona, they gave up 42 points, but there's been a concerted effort to make things, get things right, get things better on the defensive side of things, and uh, they've been much, much better on that side. I mean, Dylan, they've definitely been riding the ship continually throughout the season, but, I mean, even as recently as their opening round of the playoffs against Christ the King, uh, I know there was a lot of backups inserted in that game. It was a blowout early on, but still gave up 42 points. So this has been a, uh, a porous defense at different times throughout the year. It's just up to uh, Johnny Shepard and company to exploit those, uh, those weaknesses. Shepard rolls right. Chase there. Heaves one towards the end zone. That's incomplete. And this is huge. This is like you've got to get in the end zone if you are Iona. Inside the final minute, you're inside the 10-yard line. No doubt this is a need-to-score type scenario for Iona. If they're able to punch it in, you can go into the locker room with you know, some things to discuss, certainly a lot of adjustments at halftime, but at least that hope of, you know, we're still in this one. Second and goal from the seven-yard line for the Gales of Iona Prep. Shepard flings it over the middle, and that is incomplete. He was going for a safety blanket there. Mike Senator just a little bit off on, on a slant route there. He had, or Senator had a step. If a Johnny Shepard were to put it on him, but as you see, that ball just floats on him a little bit. Hit the turf pretty hard too, did Senator. 
Third and goal. St. Anthony's fans on this near sideline here, they're getting excited. They want to stop. Shepard motions Acevedo to his right. Hand off, up the middle, touchdown, Iona. And it was number 28, the freshman, Brennan Presley. How about that? You call, dial up the number of the freshman running back, Brennan Presley, only has 40 carries on the year, but he gets it in this unexpected situation and just does a really good job finding the hole, finishing strong into the end zone right there. Yeah, Presley, he's going to be special, man. Just a freshman. Those 40 carries that you mentioned also go along with three touchdowns. And another blocked PAT. I think Ian Strong just does this for fun at this point. We showed you at the beginning of the broadcast that incredible blocked field goal, which really, as John Perez detailed, switched the pendulum, right, in St. Anthony's favor. Ian Strong doesn't get a piece of that. That field goal goes through. It's Stepanak, who are the number one seed. It is St. Anthony's having to try to go up to Iona and beat the Gales for a second time this season. You, it's, you're back in the semifinals. Like, I don't, listen, you played this sport at, at a super high level. That is just eerie, right? If you're, if you're on that St. Anthony's bus making that trip up to Iona. So they were able to avoid one of the top three seeds because of number five making that block. Uh, it was so key for St. Anthony's to enter this playoff season with the number one seed be able to get to Mitchell Field through South Huntington, of course. And, you know, you talk about the impacts on the overall season of Ian Strong and his block kicks, even just tonight. How much does that take the air out of the balloon for Iona? You go, you drive down, second touchdown of the night, second block kick of the night. It almost just steals back a little bit more momentum to the Friar sideline as they try and punch something in with 29 seconds left in the half. And it really kind of forces you then – You've got to start chasing it, right? You've got to start chasing those points. Go for two. Bissell. Sidewinding kick. Fielded at the nine-yard line. And the special teams play for St. Anthony's has been spectacular. How many times have we seen the Friars start off near midfield as Jaden Jenkins with a quality return? You know, I think Bill Belichick would really love watching this St. Anthony's team executing tonight because what's the motto up in Foxborough? Do your job. That's pretty much what everybody out here on the Friars sideline has done so far. Everybody contributing in their own way and just so hard to stop this St. Anthony's team when they're executing on all levels. I think Joe Minucci also likes what he's seeing on that sideline. First and 10 from the 43, the way that Dante could sling it, you can certainly dial up something here for some late points at the end of this first half. Torres again runs. Oh, a terrific tackle from behind. Capri Martin with the tackle. The Friars do call a timeout with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. It's a really nice play by Capri Martin right there. Not a lot of 270 pounders who are going to be able to grab that shoelace of Dante Torres, but Capri, the Villanova commit, just a stud and unbelievable athlete makes a play. St. Anthony's chasing the 15th AAA championship. We showed other teams today with multiple levels of championships. You only win championships at St. Anthony's at the highest level. And you see them there. The last time was 2013, avenging that bitter loss a year earlier to the Flyers of Chaminade. Before that, Stepanak, Iona, Holy Trinity. When the Titans had Anthony Brunetti running around, great win there for the Flyers. And they're looking for number 15 here tonight. 11 seconds left in the first half. Second and eight from the 45-yard line. Quick out to Morant. Morant gets out toward the 50-yard line. The clock will continue to run. And actually, it stops now on a timeout by St. Anthony. So the Friars can maybe get one last 
heave yeah. towards the end zone, and we know Dante's arm power. He can get it there, that is for sure. Yeah, I mean, we know that Torres has the arm to get into the end zone, and we know ultimately waiting for him in the end zone will be a couple different 6'5 receivers who are going to be playing Power 5 football in a couple <laughs> years. So it's never a bad proposition when you're looking at a Hail Mary. Yeah, I'm not the OC on this team, but I say how about jump ball KJ Duff? <laughs> I don't know. It's basically playing jackpot out there. Yeah. Listen, football fans, all season long, Varsity Media has brought you exclusive coverage of the New York Catholic High School Football League as well as Long Island Football. And it's not too late to grab our app for game highlights, top 10 plays of the week, weekly podcasts, and more. Only $29.99 for VarsityMediaPass.com and get the Varsity Media Pass app now. So off the timeout, we've got trips right for the Friars. Third and three from the 50, final play of the first half. Dante Torres slings it, a 50-yard pass, jump ball, and it is incomplete. There were a whole lot of bodies there looking for that football. The half ends on an incomplete pass, but it was dominated by the Friars. That man, number one, K.J. Duff and Dante Torres, an incredible first half for the Friars. And in this Catholic AAA championship, it is St. Anthony's with a 29-12 lead. We'll send it down to the field now as John Perez has St. Anthony's head coach, Joe Minucci. Joe, the defense, three picks, special teams, a couple of blocks. What have you seen out of those two facets? Yeah, you know, the kids uh, just came out here ready to play, and, uh, you know, they're having fun. They're flying around, and, uh, you know, so far the, it was a good first half for our defense. And offensively, too. You know how special of a player Dante Torres is, but when he's running to the house and he's got that 70-yard run, what are you as a coach thinking? Uh, you know, like you said, Dante's a special uh, football player, so, you know, he can throw it, and, you know, he, he can run the ball when he needs to, so he took advantage of what he saw in front of him, and he made a great play. I know that nothing's ever perfect for you. What are some adjustments that you're going to be telling you guys for the second half? Uh, you know, we just got to, you know, go in there and continue to work hard. You know, these guys are a good football team. By no means are, you know, it's a game over. We still got, uh, you know, 24 minutes to go here, and we're going uh, to go in. We're going we're gonna to talk. We're going to get some things right, and uh, we're going to come out here, and we're going to play no second half of football. All right, thank you, Joe. My pleasure. You got it. That's Joe Minucci. Guys, we'll send it back up thanks to you. Thanks, John. And thanks, Joe. Joe Minucci was the defensive coordinator in 2013 when the Friars won. He's never won as a player or a head coach. He lost as a player to Mount St. Michael in the championship game. And then the year after, his senior year, lost to Monsignor Farrell in the semifinals. The Friars have a 29-12 lead here. It's halftime of the Catholic AAA championship game. It's presented by Catholic Health, and it's all right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. At Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see extraordinary life. The most extraordinary of which is you. It's because our Catholic faith places the highest value on people, all people. It's the inspiration for our exceptional medical care with unmatched compassion. And it's why at Catholic Health, you're more than a patient. You're someone's family, best friend, and a neighbor to us all. Long live Long Island.
Now that the season is ending, it's time to order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help save you thousands of dollars in college tuition and land a spot on the team. Our videos include a bio section, editing effects to help you stand out on the field, music, and a digital link to send to college coaches. And if you act today, we are offering 15% off when you mention this ad, good through Thanksgiving. Contact Varsity Media today at 516-403-2050 or email jeff at varsitymedia.net. High school football fans, Varsity Media is bringing exciting, exclusive content to you for the 2022 season. Introducing the Varsity Media Pass, available on iOS and Android. Accessible all season long, the Varsity Media Pass features game highlights, weekly podcasts. A clash of styles, out in Satake, we love those differing styles, right? Top 10 plays of the week, player interviews, and so much more. Head to varsitymediapass.com to download the app and start enjoying content only Varsity Media can bring. Let me tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? Yourself or the man that's beside you? Or the man that you know you'll give everything in your heart for? We get one opportunity in life. One chance in life to do whatever you're going to do. To lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make. Whatever legacy you're going to leave. Leave your legacy. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge that. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. Halftime here of the Catholic AAA Championship. And it is St. Anthony's with a 29-12 lead over the Gales of Iona Prep. We welcome you into the press box. One person who's very happy about this, uh, this lead is Lexi Alloy. You see her here to our right. Uh, she is a part, a big part, of the Salisbury Tavern. Uh, our latest food review here for the AAA Championship game. They're over in uh, Carmen Avenue. There you see it in Westbury. Sports bar and restaurant. They serve more than just your standard bar food. Not just those pretzels, burgers, and wings. They've got 12 big screens. The sound is always on for the big games. And it's always a family atmosphere as well. Owned and operated since 2017 by Joe and Andrea Alloy. All three of their kids, proud Friars alums, including Lexi. Yes, I am. Juliana as well. And Ben, we just talked about that 2009 championship team. He was down there on the field here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. All right, so uh, Lexi, what do, you, what do we have here, first of all? Um, welcome to, Thank to, you. Thanks for having to the press me. box. Yeah, thanks for having, uh, bringing the food, for sure. <laughs> so listen, one, one question before we, before we dive in. Um, you know, look, what, what separates Salisbury Tavern from, from other bars and grills? Other than being family owned and the food, it goes from bar bites, as in pretzels, wings, to risotto, pasta, the ribeye. Um, it's really a family atmosphere, so when you come in, you feel like home. Everybody knows your name, everybody knows your face, um, and it, you're treated like family. So that's one of our top top priorities. So even if you're not a Friar alum, like Pat Godfrey here, he just went to Harbor Fields. Yeah, Harbor right? Fields good. He's good. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> Except everybody. Now, now, Lexi, I got a question for yeah. you. You know, I've always never had an issue feeling at home in a tavern, yeah. right? But one of my qualms with your standard tavern mm -hmm. is their bar food, it's kind of basic, right? Mm -hmm. It tastes like something frozen that they just threw into a fryer for a couple minutes totally. and brought it out to you. Yeah. And my understanding is when you go to Salisbury Tavern, there's Not a little us. bit more love that goes into the process yeah. than just, you know, yeah. your standard old Our bar food. Our chef's awesome. The staff is awesome. The food is unbelievable. Um, and it's always made with love, like you said. So it's great. 
Yo, right. you hear that? Unbelievable. I think we might have to see so for ourselves. Well, we have some of the some of their offerings here in the press box. All righty. Well, Let's thank, in. thank the Lord for that on this wonderful Catholic Championship Saturday. So you've got you've got the uh, vodka chicken parm hero, right? One of my favorites. I'm I'm actually giddy over the prospect <laughs> of eating this sandwich. I've so. got the fried buttermilk chicken sandwich. You ready? Can we just dive right in? Let's go. Let's do it. All right. How is it? Oh my. Oh my. I love the spice effect here too. Like, mm -hmm. you you ha you had. It's not too crispy. But right? it's crispy enough. Crispy enough, yep. but not overly crispy. A little bit of spice there at the end. A little kick kicks you at the end. It's awesome. I like it. I just have to say, you know, the vodka parm. I don't know how far it is from Westbury to my apartment in yeah. New York City, <laughs> but if I can either Uber it's Eats it or maybe way. just ride the Long Island Railroad out there, it's actually worth hopping on the Long Island Railroad to just go get this sandwich. Trust me. I wouldn't do that for just any old sandwich, but when I tell you that this bread is perfectly chewy, the perfect amount of sesame on it, just a nice flat chicken cutlets. My Italians out there, you understand the importance of a flat chicken cutlet. They're hitting on all levels here, and I mean... Really couldn't thank you enough, Lexi. I'm glad you like it. Awesome stuff. Great. Salisbury Tavern. Yeah, they passed the test for sure. Over there, Carmen Avenue, Westbury. Listen, if you're a St. Anthony's alum, you want to wear your gear, you get 15 to 20% off the bill this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Awesome stuff. Thanks. Uh, to Lexi and the Thank entire you guys. and Dylan, Alloy you know, of course, we're well. always impartial, but we might have to borrow some St. Anthony's here. <laughs> Perhaps, yeah. <laughs> I, I think there's plenty to go around yeah. here tonight yeah. at Mitchell Athletic Complex. Awesome. awesome. Well, thank you guys. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much yeah. for being here. And I'm going to be rushing out to Westbury right after this. Please let me know when you guys close up so okay. I can figure out if I can get another one of these for I the night. I it. suspect that you That's can. Awesome. All right, quick break here, and we'll have another special guest here at halftime. It is 29-12. St. Anthony's with the lead. Five minutes left here at halftime of this Catholic AAA championship presented by Catholic Health. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks, know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Halftime half -time festivities continuing, continuing here in the Catholic AAA Championship game. We bring you inside the press box. again. I, I lost Pat Godfrey somewhere. I think that chicken, that vodka chicken sandwich, I think uh, he's out there, I think, in the hallway somewhere eating that. Welcoming in now the president of the Catholic High School Football League, Chris Hardett, uh, a man who wears a lot of hats, so we know that you are happy that your Titans you're the, you're the athletic director at Holy Trinity. So congratulations, first off, on that. Thank you. Another title back-to-back -back in different divisions uh, for the Titans and uh, another tremendous day of, of high school football here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. I always feel like when you're able to get all three championships here, it's an incredible day. Yep. Yeah, super proud, super proud. I mean, uh, this is my 15th year as the, uh, as the president of the league, and uh, it just – it's, uh, it's like Groundhog Day, you know, we come back every year and it's always great football, three, three great games, um, especially this year so far. I mean, we've had, the, you know, the first two games were basically went down to the last possession and I own it putting that one at the end of the half there. I think we're going we're gonna to have a good, good second half here too. Yeah, I think, I think one of the overriding themes here today and really throughout the season uh, are about teams who are looking to move up. The, the, the table, right? And whether it's go from a double A two division up to a double A one or a double A one, go up to triple A. And I think we saw a little bit of here today, right? A, a, a Xavier playing in double A two, a, a bit of an, a, an anomaly off of last year, only the one year for them. And uh, Chris Stevens said, yeah, we expect to be in double A one next year. And, you know, uh, uh, there'll be some interesting conversations, I think, for the, for the Titans and maybe yeah. more Catholic to uh, maybe make arguments to, to make it to the triple A uh, next year. 
Listen, Ben, Dylan, we talked about this a lot in the past, and um, I think it's really one of the strengths of it's, – it's the strength of our league, um, what we try to do with our teams um, to create the best competitive football we can compete – we can get for the kids. And um, it's something that – it's not easy. It's very difficult sometimes to uh, – we have a committee that gets together and, and we'll place the teams next year. And, you know, sometimes we're right. Um, sometimes we're 100% right. Sometimes it's, uh, it's a little difficult. But – it's the right thing to do the way we believe it is anyway because it creates it creates competitive the most competitive football we can possibly create for our kids and that's what we're trying to do one thing i love that you guys did here this year as well is you went back to that structure of if you're the triple a you're in the triple a playoffs there's no uh, confusion about that there's no like well should we be there we deserve to be no triple a was triple a and so on and so forth down the down the pecking order. Yeah, and that's something that that's you you're right and that's something that we really um we that was on the table last year about about the way we did it the previous year. And again, it's it's troubleshoot trying to troubleshoot what we do and try to come up with the best possible uh st- structure and setup that we can come up with and um sometimes it's, you know, this year it worked and I believe this year it worked out really well. You know, we did we did a one to basically a 1 to 22 schedule so everybody got a really good um, really good competition up and down, up and down the league, and um, you know some people again in the public. Some people are a little confused about that. You know, hey, why did why did double A one teams play double A two teams? Why did double A one teams play triple A teams? Right. Well, it gave everybody an opportunity to, to to gauge themselves against other programs and, and other schools in our league. But when we got back to the playoffs, that's where we were, and um, it's different than a lot of other leagues do around here and around us. But uh, we think we're doing it right. I, I'm gonna agree with you there. Uh, Chris Hardett, great stuff this year, and, and we thank you as always uh, for allowing us this opportunity here to, to come in and uh, showcase some of the best high school football around. Dylan, you've been a great partner. Uh, you, Ben, and Varsity Media have been a great partner for us, and, uh, and we hope it stay, keeps going in the future. So we'll see you in basketball season. Yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> if you have any chance. that There, there might be a half of a, of a chicken parm. Uh, well, I look like a guy parm. who eats chicken parm. I'm just saying uh, – Pat Godfrey just escaped I, with it. As long as it's a salad, I'll have a salad, but I'm not going to have it. I think I have some lettuce here <laughs> in that sandwich. Chris Harder, thanks, thanks so much thanks, for bro. joining us. Another quick break, and we'll have the start of the second half when we return right here on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Now that the season is ending, it's time to order a college recruiting video from Varsity Media. Our video will help save you thousands of dollars in college tuition and land a spot on the team. Our videos include a bio section, editing effects to help you stand out on the field, music, and a digital link to send to college coaches. And if you act today, we are offering 15% off when you mention this ad, good through Thanksgiving. Contact Varsity Media today at 516-403-2050 or email Jeff at varsitymedia.net. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex here in Uniondale. We've played two full football games. We've crowned champions, and now it is the second half of the AAA championship. St. Anthony's with a 29-12 lead. Dylan Butler here with Pat Godfrey, the well-fed <laughs> Pat Godfrey. And uh, it's going to be interesting here, I think, in the second half. I, I think Chris Hart nailed it. You know, that touchdown late um, really helped out, I think, Iona. They can go in feeling a little bit better about themselves. They can make a few halftime adjustments and uh, see what they have going on here at the start of the second half. Without a doubt, you know, I think the message has to be if you're Coach Bagnolo to your team at halftime, listen, guys, we played about as bad a half of football as we played all year long, and, and that's about as bad as we can play. So, you know, from the defensive side of the ball, if we can sure up some things on the back end, and then on the offensive side, just clean up some of these silly mistakes we made out there in the first half, all of a sudden we're looking at a, a much different ball game. So I think there's still, you know, a lot of hope in this for Iona, but they got to get things moving the right direction very quickly to start off this second half. We don't know quite yet who will win this game, but we, what we do know is that the winner will be heading up to Buffalo next week to take on St. Francis. St. Francis beating Canisius in the Monsignor Martin championship game. Back-to-back years now for St. Francis. 
It was St. Francis who made the trip to New Rochelle last year, losing to Iona Prep. It was Iona Prep's first state championship. And I think it was last game, you made a fantastic point that the last championship in this league for St. Anthony's was 2013. It was before the addition of the state championship portion of these playoffs. So that's a big change there that, you know, again, we're not saying that they're, you know, they're going to win this game. Um, but the Friars, not only will they get a chance to win this game, but they'll also get the chance to continue their season. That wasn't the case when they won all those other 14 championships. Absolutely. And, you know, it's very rare to school in a program like St. Anthony's to do something that's never been done before, right, you know, in terms of winning championships. But that's an opportunity that's still out there for this team to be the first state champion, you know, or, you know brought back to South Huntington. And I think that's been a real priority for these guys all year long. It ha you know, hasn't been lost on them. So the Friars will kick off, and that's the other part of this here too, right? Iona, you score a touchdown. you got to field this ball, though. It's fielded back at the 10-yard line. And look at this. That's a quality return for a guy who <laughs> nearly had was blown up uh, back on his own 5-yard line. Let's send it down to John Perez with some of Iona Prep's thoughts. Guys, we spoke to both coaches earlier in the week. They mentioned how difficult it is to prepare for both squads. And for Iona Prep head coach Joe Spagnola, he said that St. Anthony's is a team that you have to draw up at least 75 plays and then draw up another 75 plays because they're just so dynamic on defense. And for the adjustments in the second half, he's going to dip into that latter 75 plays. Meanwhile, for Joe Benucci, he said that Iona Prep is a game that he's had scheduled on his calendar, but obviously hasn't been telling his, ch his kids. Uh, having said that, though, look to see the adjustments between both squads in the second half. Guys, back to you. Thanks, John. Shepard rolls out. Completion, far sideline. And a big job on the yak, if you will. It was Ethan Acevedo moving the chains. I love this play call to open up the half, you know. Something a little bit simpler. Get a Johnny Shepard using his feet to roll out that pocket, give him the run pass option. Right there finds Ethan Avisado to move the chains. A run on first down. And look at Shepard, man. Yeah, strong, strong okay, jumping in, the down. shoulder barge. Then it took two more Friars to take him down. A Johnny Shepard is... Like, he's a linebacker playing quarterback. Yeah. And, you know, St. Anthony's, I don't know if they're you know, feeling fat and happy after a really strong first half, but they're going to have to keep bringing the wood to try and bring down a Johnny Shepard. He's not going to go down without a fight here tonight. Well, he'll go down here, and again, strong in there, but the first one was Thomas Mackle, number 15, the senior from Huntington. Mackle's a guy who had a great game. Last time around that we saw him versus Chaminade in the semifinals, had a, had a big interception in that game, and really just been playing well all year long, holding down one of those DN spots for St. Anthony's. That a loss of two. So second and 12 from the 48-yard line for the Gales. If they could bookend the halves with touchdowns in each new ball game. Shepard tries to go far sideline looking for Isaiah Bennett, and that one is incomplete. Third and long type situation. If I'm St. Anthony's, I'm making sure that I have a spy accounting for Johnny Shepard on this play. He's shown the ability and the willingness to use his legs to move the chains when he has to. So don't be surprised to see Ian Strong floating, keeping an eye on number three. Third and 12 from the 48-yard line. Acevedo in motion. Shepard up the middle, finds a hole. Shepard tries to cut inside. He knew that five was there. And man, strong, pushes him back. And you know, Johnny Shepard realizes that in these crucial situations, sometimes the best person to trust is your own two feet. Plows forward and gets stopped just short, it appears, of that first down. Yeah, fourth and one for the Gales. Yeah. 
Acevedo again motions. Shepard the handoff, lowering the shoulder, pushing forward, and getting the first down is the freshman again. We saw him get in the end zone, and Brennan Presley gets the first down. Interested to see how Colin O'Garrow's doing. Not sure if he was shaken up, but he hasn't gotten a carry in a good minute here for the Iona offense. Something to keep an eye on. Acevedo. And he is stopped short. The Gales have tried all game long to get Ethan Acevedo into space. And this time it was strong and DiCiaro making the tackle right at that original line of scrimmage. One thing that's also making a huge difference in this game in terms of Iona's ability to get the ball into space is just Kenya Miles. You know, he's flying around to the ball and uh, not giving them a ton of breathing room when they are able to get the ball out to guys like Acevedo. Second and nine from the 33-yard line. Shepard thought about the toss, runs, and he's pulled down again. This time... Looks like it might have been number 78, Tyler Dunn. Yes, sir. 6'1 senior from Massapequa. Just a scrappy, tough dude. Figures out a way to get work. And moved from the offensive line to the defensive side because there was a need there. And he has filled that need really well. Third and four from the 27-yard line. Shepard, the keeper. Gets the push, and he'll get the first down. You know, this has to be a really encouraging drive so far coming out the, out the gate of the second half. For Iona fans, pretty much marching down at will and really being led by the legs of a Johnny Shepard. For those who remember the uh, regular season classic last year at St. Anthony's, it was really the legs of a Johnny Shepard that gave Iona the opportunity to come back and win in a thriller in South Huntington. His legs have been instrumental every time he's played St. Anthony's in his career. Oh. And Shepard is picked off. Jaden Jenkins with the interception, the fourth interception on the day for the Friars defense. As soon as I finish praising his legs, <laughs> you see why he was leaning so heavily on him right there. Ill-advised throw. For his fourth interception, that one to Jaden Jenkins, who's already had a big night here at Mitchell Field. And St. Anthony's gets bailed out after giving up a considerable amount of yardage on that opening drive. That's St. Anthony's fourth. It was Jaden Jenkins' third. Oh. What a day defensively for number 80, Jaden Jenkins. First and 10 from the 34-yard line for the Friars. Torres over the middle, fine, strong. Look at Egan Strong, the strides. He gets out to about the 26-yard line. Huge shout out to the St. Anthony's offensive line on this play. They pretty much give Dante Torres all day. Look at that beautiful clean pocket. Great block by Carson Chanchuli. You give him that much time. Ian Strong on the slant route, just too easy. St. Anthony's looking to move fast. First and 10, handoff. It's Ruda pushing forward, and he gets inside the 25-yard line. Ruda and Morant have been a terrific one-two combination rushing the football. And again, St. Anthony's looking to utilize tempo here. Another handoff to Ruda, lowers the shoulder, and he's pulled down at the 20. Did he get the first down? And he does. Dylan, you said it though. St. Anthony's doing an incredible job of mixing up the run and the pass as they've done all season. You know, people like to think of them as a pass first offense, but really they, they favor more of a balanced attack. Getting Ruda involved, certainly making a uh, big difference. Torres. He'll get moving, but not for long. <laughs> Pulled down there. You see 72, it looks like, inside that pile. He is a beast, dude. Jalen Hicks, a junior, 
two-year starter. He's just about as good as it gets in that defensive end position. Apparently he also practices Taekwondo, so just a renaissance man in terms of his athleticism. Great story about him earning a UConn offer. Yeah. <laughs> that we'll get to a little bit later. Second and 14 from the 23-yard line. Let's just say he used some of that martial arts. <laughs> High stepping it into the end zone. Frank Ruda, the 23-yard touchdown as the Friars extend their lead. And Frank Ruda just does what he does best. His whole career, he's been a guy with an uncanny knack for the end zone. You see him right there, follow the really good block by 84, Alex Mengi, the tight end, and just dancing into the end zone for his 11th touchdown of this 2022 season. Ruda with eight carries for 40 yards and that touchdown. What a huge momentum swing that was. It was Iona looking like they'd get in the end zone. Instead, Jenkins with the pick, his third of the game, and Ruda with the touchdown on the other side, extending the lead to 36-12. A moment ago, Pat, you shouted out Carson Chanchuli, his ability to block for Dante Torres. Let's get to know big Carson Chanchuli. The senior left tackle, returning starter, favorite meal. Yeah, man, you go with mom's chicken cutlets, no doubt about that. Favorite movie, Wolf of Wall Street, his favorite athlete, Joe Minucci. How much Joe Minucci film did Carson Chanchuli watch? You know what I'm going to tell you, Dylan? Carson Chanchuli is the type of guy who's going to be very successful one day because, you know what, he clearly knows his audience, <laughs> and Coach Minucci appreciates that. Carson, if you want to tell me that I'm your favorite announcer, please let me know after the game. But, you know, certainly a guy who is a huge contributor on that St. Anthony's OL, stalwart left tackle, and uh, that diet of chicken cutlets has given him the strength to be able to fend off the Iona DL tonight. Carson Chanchuli, the senior from Oakdale, my hometown. He's just gotten bigger and stronger and more physical this year. He's been a big part of Dante Torres' success. Are they watching that Get to Know right now, or is that a different, that's a different feed they have there, right? They're, they don't have our game feed. <laughs> <laughs> so St. Anthony's extending their lead 36-12, to 12, putting just additional pressure now on the Gales for a response. Really nice play there on special teams by St. Anthony's as they've been putting it together in kind of three phases of the game. Looks like a Fryer might be a little bit banged up. Appears to be number eight, Nico Gentile. Or apologies, actually, Vinny Spina. Yeah, Spina's right been really good today for the Friars. First and 10 for Iona Prep at their own 34-yard line. Gales are desperate for a response, and look at this. Stephen Dowdy has blockers up the field. Dowdy gets the first down, and he'll get out to midfield. A sophomore from the Bronx. Man, he has emerged this year to the point where he will certainly be a scholarship player in two years' time. I really like the creativity here on this play. Just got to get a little something going. So the double pitch, you see a Johnny Shepard out there in front as a, as a leader blocking for his guy, fighting. A little high step, Shepard. Does break that first tackle, but oh man, Goldstein brings it okay. with that tackle up high. You know, that's really the importance of gang tackling when you're playing up against a guy like a Johnny Shepard. Initially breaks that tackle from Sam Cook, but Griffin Goldstein in hot pursuit and finishes him off. It's team defense at its finest. Second and eight, and that's one of the biggest improvements of this Friars team from the beginning of the year until now in this second half of the Catholic AAA Championship game. They have become a much better defensive team. Shepard's got time, fakes it, being chased from behind. Shepard puts it down the field and he is tackled. Looks like Vinny Spina again. Yeah, good to see him back out there. Never an easy open field tackle. 
for a defensive back of all people against Johnny Shepard. So this brings up a third and five for the Gales from the 48 yard line. There's the handoff. <laughs> Preston Carey. <laughs> nice to meet you right there. Oh my gosh. So that was a fr that was technically a freshman on a freshman there, but Carey does not look the part of a freshman, that yeah, is for sure. Is, this is no JV9 game. <laughs> uh, out here, Preston Carey fires the gap. You'll see his physicality come in here. Even lifts the feet <laughs> of the runner. Yeah, that was Brennan Presley again, the freshman. And you do wonder, right, of the health, I guess, of Colin O'Garrow. We've seen a lot of Colin of Brennan Presley here, not a lot of Colin O'Garrow. There's a quick out and a key. Oh, no, incomplete. Thought it was a completion there to Acevedo, but the official on the far side says no. Huge fourth down stop there by St. Anthony's. Really just impressed with this defense who's answered the call at every single turn tonight when they've had their backs up against it. They've gotten needed turnovers right there. Another turnover on downs. And as of right now, it looks really, really tough to imagine Iona closing this gap. I think especially here if St. Anthony's can punch the ball in. And they have been a team that when they smell the blood in the water, man, they are sharks and they attack. And they do a good job this year finishing games, which was an issue a year ago. Against the Gales at home, they didn't finish. Against Stepanak at home, they did not finish. And to this point, they have done an incredible job of finishing games. Here's Dante Torres rolling to the right. And he'll get in to his own sideline. Okay, Dante, Torres. Dante Torres has this ability to just look so graceful as he kind of long strides it over to the sideline, just effortless at times. And I got to tell you, you know, just in terms of raw talent, putting it all together with a surrounding cast, leadership, all the different things that you look at when you're evaluating a quarterback, Dante Torres is as fine a quarterback as I've ever seen at the high school level. Flag on the play, and this will be... A defensive holding penalty. I did see the uh, shoulder pad of K.J. Duff being kind of put back in under the jersey. You wonder if maybe that's where the infraction occurred. Regardless, this does move the chains for St. Anthony's as they are on the 41-yard line. You know, Dante Torres' ability to scramble helps kind of incite some of those penalties. The longer DBs are left out there in man coverage, the more likely they are to grab a little bit. You mentioned his gazelle-like strides. It, it helps that you're 6'4", right? <laughs> like he's yeah. just, I'll tell you, Fordham is getting a steal in Dante Torres. Handoff up the middle trying to churn those legs. It's Darius Morant. And there's been a pretty steady diet, it feels like, of Ruda and Morant, as we've seen all year long. Yeah, so far, you know, St. Anthony has been able to really run the type of offensive game plan that they wanted to going into this game. They've really been able to mix it up between that two-headed monster, a tailback, and then just kind of those, those jump balls to number five and number one. And it's really made all the difference. Ruda to this point, a little more successful rushing the ball today. Morant, that was his fourth carry for just three yards. Torres slings it over the middle. And that was a bullet to KJ Duff. That's you know, you, you see that play and it looks just kind of routine, but I really can't reiterate enough how difficult it is to have this level of timing between a quarterback and a receiver. That's right on the number. There's no two numbers to hit between. <laughs> That's on the number from, from Dante Torres. K.J. Duff, another reception. The offer is already there. Rutgers among them. Good protection. Torres, oh, he's got a wide open receiver. K.J. Duff is hot <laughs> tough. In single coverage, when you don't put any defenders on, 
Uh, that is a sure touchdown, and K.J. Duff counts them out for you if, in case you forgot. One, two, and three touchdowns for K.J. Duff. You know, I, I often say that K.J. Duff makes it look too easy, but in that instance, he really did make it look too easy. Um, I think you probably could have sent out my 10-year-old cousin to make that catch, but K.J. Duff just all over the place tonight, making a huge impact in championship play. He is having himself a game. And I mean, Dante Torres, 11 for 18, 308 yards, three touchdowns, unbelievable. I mean, Duff, five catches, 167 yards, three touchdowns. Both of these guys just having career nights on the biggest stage. K.J. Duff is number one, one of the top receivers in the tri-state and the best agents in the real estate business. They've got a knack for anticipating their clients' needs and matching those needs with the right piece of real estate. Barbie and Sue from Douglas Elliman put their clients' interest first. So if you're thinking about buying or selling, let them put their years of experience to work for you and help you find the perfect place to call home. K.J. Duff has found the home here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. Three touchdowns on the day, and he's got the Friars in front, 43-12. to 12. The funny thing here as well is, you know, John Perez detailed in this recent history between these two teams, they've all been close games, right? The two regular season games... The postseason game a year ago all really decided by a touchdown. But this is the first of any of those matchups, the fourth matchup in the last two years that has been lopsided. Yeah, you know, before the game we were kind of speculating as to what the score might be, some predictions. And uh, you heard a lot of 35-31, maybe 42-40, something like that. Um, and, you know, not necessarily counting Iona out of a comeback just yet, but I didn't see this coming from a mile away. Gales first and 10 from their own 32 yard line. Shepard, oh look out, pressure comes and that ball gets deflected. It was Ian Strong getting those arms up and man, he is like elastic man. Strong, those long arms just reaching up and making play after play. Yeah, Ian Strong just able to impact the game on so many levels. We've seen him contribute on the offensive side of the ball tonight as well. But just having a guy who can fly around the field like that to account for the Ajani Shepherds of Iona makes life a lot easier. He'll play his football in the Big Ten very soon. Shepard chased and he finds a whole bunch of guys in the black jerseys. They push him out of bounds and into the St. Anthony's bench. Getting a little chippy over there. A lot of emotions going on. I saw number 22, Griffin Goldstein, emerge from that pile. Looking pumped up. I remember, this for a lot of these Friars, this is personal. And a guy like Shepard... Uh, did a lot of damage to them last year and you think about the offseason and you think back to those games and the Johnny Shepard was right at the heart of so many of those big plays that the Gales made against the Friars last year. Third and five, Acevedo again motions. Good chase, great block as well, but Shepard just throws it into his own sideline. Yeah, Macklin strong right there in hot pursuit of a Johnny Shepard. Forced to throw out of bounds. So Timmy Longo, deep man. There you see him for the Friars. And again, it is Sam Bassesi back to punt. He's a junior from New Canaan. There's the fair catch, and as he does when Dante Torres is the quarterback, Timmy Longo makes the catch. We mentioned one offensive lineman, your former offensive lineman. Let's give some love 
to the Gales, Tomas Schultz Langendorf, the Trinity commit. The big center, favorite Thanksgiving food, mac and cheese. Going a little old school. NHL 22, favorite video game, and I think he also knows his personnel. He's the center. <laughs> He's got to get the ball to Ajani Shepard. Of course, Ajani Shepard's his favorite athlete. I love it, Tomas. He has a great combination, right? The academics and the athletics. That's why he's going to Trinity next year. For those who don't know, Trinity and the NESCAC, so one of the little Ivies, as they're called. Unbelievable academic reputation. Handoff, and there is Morant. Pushed back. You see four in on the tackle. That's a Donde Gnarly. Of those guys in the Iona prep secondary, right, at least the starters, Codrington and Walden and Johnson, those were all guys who were starters a year ago. Um, their big guy, their big starter a year ago, right, transfers down to IMG and Ellis Robinson. But Gnarly, he has come in out of, from Horace Mann, and he's been an absolute stud, the junior has unbelievable ball skills. In fact, I think if he didn't transfer in as late as he did, he, he'd probably be even better utilized for this team. Torres looks deep, has a man. Oh, what a pass and what a reception. Nick Matos. Matos. Yeah, we shouted him out pregame and mentioned the fact that this guy had an unbelievable catch last week for Shamanad to propel them to the AAA title game and here. Right on the sideline, the footwork, a thing of beauty in the hands. Well done, number 17. The size of the St. Anthony's receivers was certainly a concern for Joe Spagnola, right? I mean, you just go the eye test when your secondary are 5'10", 5'8", 5 5'11", 5 5 and 5'10", and you're going up against 6'5", 6'1", 6'2". That's, that's a problem. And it really has been all night. Not only 6'5", 6'4", 6'2", but also uh, an able quarterback who can... Who's 6'4". <laughs> yeah, 6'4", and can get the ball there every you time. look over the defense. <laughs> Torres, chased, scrambles. Dante, Torres, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it, it's like watching a more responsible Johnny Manziel back there. Is that, is that maybe a good comparison for the way Dante Torres has been running around? I mean, my God, just the, the creativity. He gets back there. You think that three different guys have him, but sorry. 6'4", 200, don't like to be wrapped up. Turns a negative to a positive, just like Pitbull. I, <laughs> I will tell you, if he does end up at Rose Hill playing for the Rams of Fordham, you know, that's an offense that really likes to put points up in bunches. I think Dante would love to do that as well. He does it here on the high school level. Look at Morant pushing forward to the 10-yard line. Darius Morant, you could tell he's hungry. He saw his partner, his buddy, Frank Ruda, punch one in a little bit earlier. I got an idea. Going he should go to Salisbury own. Tavern after. Just wear the jersey. Deal. Right? That's St. Anthony's gear, isn't it? Yeah. Three quarters in the books, and what? An impressive first three quarters it was for these Friars of St. Anthony's. They lead Iona Prep 43 to 12. You're watching this Catholic Triple H Championship game presented by Catholic Health on the Varsity Media Sports Network. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Maspeth Federal Savings is here through it all. The ins and outs, the ups and downs, through the winters, the summers, and even the spring of leaks. Know that Maspeth has your back. From luxury sheets to balance sheets to dancing under the stars, your mission is our mission. And when our community calls, we proudly step forward. So whether you need it now or planning for tomorrow, through all the twists and all the turns, you can always find us right here in your neighborhood. Welcome back to Mitchell Athletic Complex. It is the fourth and final quarter of 
what is it, uh, 12 quarters today, right? <laughs> is that what we had, I think? 12 wonderful quarters that uh, <laughs> I've just loved spending with you today, Dylan. Same here, buddy. St. Anthony's really looking to put the hammer down. They lead at 43-12 over Iona Prep. They've got a second and two from the 10-yard line. Dante, far side. You can't miss that guy. Count him up again, will you? Uno, One, dos, two, tres, three, cuatro. four. K.J. Duff, another touchdown. And the Friars extend their lead. K.J. Duff just out here having a good time tonight. Fourth touchdown. And, you know, for all the credit we give him about his ability to pinpoint the ball, to go high point it, you know, he's really, really talented in his make-a-man-miss abilities and shows you right there. Torres now 12 of 19 for 318 yards as that PAT is up and good along with four touchdowns. Ten carries and 173 yards and a score. That's a ball game. How about Duff? Six receptions, 177, and we already know his touchdowns because he counted them up for us. Four touchdowns, 50 to 12 is the lead for St. Anthony's, and I defy anyone to think this would be the score at this point in the game. Absolutely shocking on all levels. I mean, especially considering Iona seemed to be hitting their stride going into this game, had a pretty dominant win over Stepanak last week, who everybody played tight against. Uh, St. Anthony's obviously with a, a last-second victory in the regular season versus Stepanak. But, you know, it's amazing what motivation can do for a team, especially when you're talking about 16- and 17-year-olds. These guys have had Iona's name circled on the calendar for the last year since they got bounced in the playoffs. So this is certainly a revenge game for a lot of these guys and just giving a really passionate performance out here today. And that's the thing, too, that Joe Spagnolo said that, like, you go back to early in the season, even that week one win over Cardinal Hayes, that 27 nothing win, said his team played horribly, right? Even that Don Bosco win saw a ton of mistakes. The win over Christ the King, 56 to 28, also more mistakes. Then you go to the St. Anthony's game at Mara Field, and we detailed it, right? Dante Vardaro gets the game winning sack, and the Friars are dancing on the field, and and at the time, Spagnola said, I think this is the best thing to happen to us, right? Because this will give us now added motivation. They go and play uh, Stepanak in that first game in White Plains, and they gave up a ton of yards to Will Kerr. They had, did end up winning that game. But he said in the second half of the season, the late portions of the playoffs, they really started to kick it in the gear, right? Wins over Chaminade and Hayes and Stepanak. They were indeed playing their best football of the year. Uh, but they just tonight ran into a buzzsaw of a St. Anthony's team who, who was already extremely good and tonight they were extremely motivated. Well I think we've always known that St. Anthony's had the ability to score points at will on offense. Now it's been a near perfect performance on the offensive side of the ball tonight but I think we knew they'd have a chance of putting up 30 plus against this Gales D. What's, what's really shocked me has been you know the relative weakness of the St. Anthony's defense throughout the course of the year and by comparison how well they played tonight. These guys have really all had career games on the defensive side of the ball. Defensive line playing exceptionally well. Secondary, I mean, Jaden Jenkins, Kenyon Miles, all playing really, really good football to be able to hold up against this Iona Prep offensive attack. And Johnny Shepard pushes it outside. And I think, you know, you, you alluded to it there. I think the changes in the defensive secondary were absolutely huge. And that was the final piece, I think, of the puzzle for the St. Anthony's team. Just figuring out where to place guys, right? Now you got Jaden Jenkins back there. You had so many of these receivers, right? But when you have Ian Strong now, that's an additional receiver, right? So now guys can go to the other side. And that's what we saw from a Kenyon Miles and a Jaden Jenkins as well. They really solidified that back end of the St. Anthony's defense. Up the middle comes the, pres the freshman Presley. And he gets a first down run. And you got to think, Colin O'Garrell has got to be banged up. Yeah, really, you know, just wish for nothing but the best for Colin O'Garrow. He, he's had a remarkable career at Iona and, and, you know, doesn't deserve 
to go out, go out this way, you know, sitting on the sideline. But kudos to him, the way that he's played all year long. Just a, uh, an absolute stud, a force for this Iona offense, and they're going to really miss him next year. They will miss this man as well, Johnny Shepard. Pushes forward. Listen, we knew about his dual threat ability, of course, from a year ago when he first, when he became the first ever Westchester player for 2,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards, but he's become even better as a leader this year, and the game's kind of slowed down. And similar to Adante Torres, just a great student of the game as well and a true leader of men is the Johnny Shepard. He and Zion Moultrie Goddard on the other side of the ball, those are absolutely the leaders of this Iona Prep team. And, you know, th those guys, Johnny Shepard and Zion Moultrie Goddard, both guys who have been working with, with About You, a charity that really close to my heart in, in New York City um, that, that works with student athletes. And I can tell you firsthand that you're not going to find a better person out there than in a Johnny Shepard, than a Zion Moultrie Goddard. Really great people who have all the intangible characteristics you look for in a football player. I think that's going to really serve them well as they transition to the FBS level next year. Both remarkable young men. Shepard, and that play blows up as it was Miles <laughs> on cue, right? Miles and Jenkins sniffing that out for the loss. But I'm glad that you said that because, you know, Joe Spagnuolo told us as well, and, and you know, we, we, we speak to all these coaches, we do our, our preparation work, and what you said is often kind of a, a coach cliche, right? He's, he's even a better person than he's a player, but your words ring true, and, and it is true about both of those guys. Fourth and seven. Shepard dances around, looks for options, still there. Pressure now comes from the edge, and Shepard rolls it out to the right. Joe, Joe, Di Chiaro. And how great has Di Chiaro been this year? They want the football, it's not gonna matter, because it's going that way anyway. So it's just semantics at this point, an extra fumble recovery for someone on a stat line. But Jojo DiCiara, we spoke about him throughout this year, a guy who fills the very big shoes of an Andrew Bardak, who was that heartbeat of the St. Anthony's team a year ago. And DiCiara became that guy. He was the heir apparent, and now... Uh, he leads this St. Anthony's defense. Yeah, those are huge shoes that he was looking to fill. I mean, that St. Anthony's defense last year ran through Andrew Bardak. <laughs> we felt like we were calling his name every other play on some broadcast last year. But JoJo has stepped in and done a, uh, a fine job all year long. He's a real quintessential piece, quintessential piece of this AAA championship team. Did I jump the gun there? No, not at all. <laughs> I think we've gotten to the portion of this game where, much like the election season, we can <laughs> project a winner as Frank Ruda works it to the outside. Not all the polls are in yet, but... St. Anthony's will win the house. <laughs> <laughs> and this is what you don't want to see. You've got an injury here for the Friars because this will not be their last game. Right, You've still got a Catholic State Championship to play for up in Buffalo next weekend against St. Francis, which beat Canisius in the Monsignor Martin Championship game. Shout out to those wonderful St. Anthony's parents who will be making the trip to sit outside in the Buffalo cold next week. I'm sure that'll be a great time. Only about seven feet of snow there. Uh, legacy is, is, a, is a word used for really by both teams, but uh, the St. Anthony's guys, uh, they're leaving their legacy. Ian Strong and Dante Torres talked about what that meant to them. Best group we ever had at St. Anthony's, like, all together. I think that's why we're uh, executing so perfectly. And the coaching staff is doing an amazing job. Specifically, we've, we've had such high expectations from ourselves, and – I feel like we've only come up short, and we're we're doing it now. We're we're winning the games where we technically not supposed to win. Where we, everyone thinks we're going to lose, we win them, and we're very very tight. Last year we had a great team, but the connection wasn't there. This year's chemistry and like the brotherhood that we have, like everyone says, it's very cliche, but 
I really feel like these guys are my family and I really feel like we could do it. Great stuff there by Ian Strong and Dante Torres. Second and seven off of the injury timeout. Torres over the middle, and yeah, that's a pass interference penalty. Whew. Timmy Longo was the intended target. I think that was Kieran Connolly. Connolly not happy with that call right there, but it's a clear grab. Bit surprising in that situation to see St. Anthony's throwing the ball. As their focus will likely shift to clock management at some point pretty soon. 7.32 left. St. Anthony's with a 50 to 12 lead. Hand off, up the middle. Quality gain there by Frank Ruda. Really nice block there on the right-hand side by Ryan Murphy and Christian Oliva. A couple of seniors who have both had fantastic careers here at St. Anthony's. I know it means a lot to both of them to be able to walk off the field here today as AAA champions, but just continue to do a really good job against a, a tough Iona D-line. Friars coach Joe Minucci said the message for his guys coming into this game was that the championship game was finally here. They've been talking about it since that semifinal loss up in New Rochelle a year ago. Another handoff. And again, it is Ruda. But the opportunity to get to this game week in and week, fo week out, the focus for the Friars has been about going 1-0 that week, right? Winning that week. But now, three months later, the game is here. And he believed that his team was ready to play. They were prepared to play. He told them to take a deep breath, relax. It's another football game. Go out and play hard and do that. And we're going to have a good chance to get a good outcome. And that is certainly the case. <laughs> I think that's an understatement, Dylan. Third and one from the 44-yard line. Another handoff. And Ruda bounces it to the outside, and he'll get a first down. Frank Ruda on the carry. First down. The keys for St. Anthony's, as we mentioned earlier, limit Shepard on the ground, limit Ogaro on the ground, limit big plays. I got to think you've pretty much checked all those boxes off if you are the Friars. Pretty much everything has gone right for St. Anthony's here tonight. And I don't necessarily know if tonight has been a true indication of what Iona is at their best. Because I think if these teams played ten times, it's going to be a closer game than this, at least nine out of the ten. But still, so so impressive by St. Anthony's on both sides of the football. Another run up the middle. It's been an interesting season, certainly, for the Friars, right? And you look back at their year that was, and... You know, you open up at home a rivalry game against Shamanad. We had that on the Varsity Media Sports Network, a 35-10 win over the Flyers. And then part of that battle for the bridge, that St. Joe's uh, Montvale 63-49 to loss. Uh, and then you're on the road. And these are not easy places to go. You go to Farrell, Iona, and Hayes, back to back to back. And you pick up wins in all three of those games as Ruda, again, pushes forward, breaks ahead, and will get another first down. Then you're finally home again. Another game we had for you on the Varsity Media Sports Network. There was a fumble, actually, on that play, so the Gales will come away with it. Then you're home again. You beat Fordham and Christ the King. And, again, that uh, incredible win at Stepanak, which set the – stage for their playoff run, making sure that they would be home the entire way and that they could avoid one of the other top three teams. Uh, so they played St Christ the King and they beat Stepanak and uh, now they are here looking to close the job and win a 15th AAA championship. It's amazing too, you know, we called that Chaminade game in South Huntington last week and thought that that was a beatdown, perhaps a little warm-up for tonight. 
And uh, St. Anthony's clearly more than warmed up. Just another all-in, really strong performance. Shepard dancing around, runs to that far sideline, and he'll get out at about the 46-yard line. Shepard will continue to play in a year's time, going to Old Dominion. Great get there for Old Dominion. Johnny Shepard's really a guy who has a unique skill set. I mean, looking at what he can do from the quarterback position, the arm strength is there. You already know that. But, you know, 6'2 six, two and a half, 235, and my sources tell me that he's running somewhere between a 4.5 and a 4.6 laser time, 40-yard dash. So just a, a truly freaky combination of size and speed. Sources, huh? Shepard bounces to the outside. I know people, Dylan. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Spagnolo, even a year ago, said Shepard was the best running quarterback that he has ever coached. Spagnolo, of course, uh, did his share of quarterbacking back in his day at Iona Prep. Coach Spags also quarterbacked in college, if I'm not mistaken. Bryant. Yeah, he played QB at Siena and then Bryant. Shepard flushed out again. Chased. Oh, and this is going to be a roughing the passer penalty against Preston Carey. And that's part of having a freshman on the varsity team and uh, honestly, it was just a shove, right? But Preston Carey is so big and so strong uh, that he sends Shepard flying and a personal foul against the Friars. And I'm sure he's getting an earful on the sidelines right oh, yeah. now. You know, obviously up by 38, not going to be a material difference in this game, but you got a state championship game next week. They're going to want to be sharp for and that margin of error shrinks down the longer you play. First and 10 from the 39 yard line. Shepard, good protection, rolls out. He gets out about the 30 yard line. Back to Joe Spagnolo. He previously was the assistant head coach and offensive coordinator at Stepanak, and there is the game ball. Uh, I think Coach Spagnola definitely carries his Stepanak experience with him, learned from one of the best and Coach O'Donnell up there in White Plains, and obviously they're now rivals, but a ton of mutual respect between those two programs that, that duke it out every year. Shepard again dances around, taken down at about the 25 yard line. Spagnolo a couple years ago brought in the great Lou D'Arienzo from New Rochelle. He was a three time state champion as a head coach there. He's the defensive coordinator for the Gales. And um, obviously, look, any this is a this is a challenge for any defensive coordinator of this St. Anthony's offensive team, that is for sure. but really a testament to the kind of program he's built in New Rochelle. The fact that a guy like Lou D'Arienzo would leave a head coaching job at a public school to come over and be a coordinator at Iona just shows the kind of talent that they're able to bring in the door. Shepard again. Just running around. Di Chiaro, another tackle. And, and, you know, I, I really do appreciate a Johnny Shepard's fighting spirit. Still out here, still grinding, still getting the tough yards. And he knows that there's only two minutes and 15 seconds left in his high school career, but he's making it a point to finish it on, the, on a good note. And that was one of the messages that Spagnola mentioned as Presley, the freshman, and DiCiaro, another tackle. But when we asked him about 
the message to his team before the game, and he said, honestly, it is also about legacy, right? He asked what this game is about. He said, are our seniors going to leave two-time AAA champions, or are they going to be that bunch of guys who contributed as juniors but fell just short? And he says it's, it's harsh to say that, right, and harsh to think that way, but it's just the reality of it. And there's guys on this team as Presley pushes forward who will go on. We know that. They will play on the next level. Their colleges are paid for, but nothing beats high school football. And these are the memories that you have for a lifetime. And uh, this is one that will certainly hurt those Gales from Iona Prep. Dylan, you're 100% right. You know, that I, I used to hear that saying all the time back when I was a high schooler. Hey, nothing's better than your high school days, even from guys who went on to play college or NFL. And I always questioned how, how that could be true, but with the benefit of hindsight and having gone through it all, I could tell you nothing really matches suiting up with your brothers on a Friday night, and uh, these guys are really going to miss this the rest of their lives. And how about this one? Get out of the way, K.J. Duff. Four touchdowns and a Gatorade bath <laughs> for Joe Minucci. And he's losing it. Coach, <laughs> Coach Minucci just started a little mosh pit on the St. Anthony's sideline. They're getting rowdy right now. And yeah, that looks like that Rage Against the Machine show I went to <laughs> back in the day at Roseland. <laughs> There's Shepard dancing out. Can he get one more touchdown in his high school career? He does with seven seconds left. Hopefully not shaken up too badly. A little slow to get up right there is a Johnny Shepard. But kudos to him on a great career. Unfortunately for a Johnny Shepard, tonight belongs to the St. Anthony's Friars. And this is a team that they're going to remember at St. Anthony's for a long time with a chance to finish it off with the first state title in school history next week. But boy... In terms of a statement W at the Triple A Championship, you couldn't ask for anything better. St. Anthony's putting their flag in the ground and saying, hey, we're back, baby. It has been a long time. You go back to the year 2013 for the last Triple A Championship for those Friars of St. Anthony's. They beat their rivals, Chaminade, on that day here at Mitchell Athletic Complex. It's their la first appearance since 2017. So, yeah, the Friars are back. That is for sure. And it wasn't even, like, lean years. It's just that they didn't win a championship, right? And that's the, that, is the, that is the goal each and every year. And if not, it's disappointing when you wear that St. Anthony's jersey. But they've now captured their 15th AAA championship. And they did it in fine fashion, winning 50-18. to 18. Dylan, you're 100% right. You know, they talk about, you know, what does it mean to be a friar? Well, I think if you talk to a St. Anthony's grad, being a friar is kind of a standard of excellence that they try to pursue in everything that they do, and especially on the sports field. So being out here, this senior class at St. Anthony's has to be incredibly proud for kind of turning the corner and getting over the hill for the first time in nine years. A lot easier said than done, but they've worked their tails off, been growing steadily for a couple years, and it culminates here tonight with a AAA title. I think that was Joe Spagnola with a big hug and a long conversation there with Dante Torres. And that speaks, I think, to the, the great deal of respect, right, between these programs and these teams. And that's the funny thing Sp Spag said kind of leading into this game. And, and, and you can speak to this as well where, you know, years ago, like if it was 1992 and it was St. Francis Prep and St. Anthony's, you don't – really kind of know each other, right? But in today's day and age with the games here on Varsity Media and, and other outlets and social media being what it is, you've got a pretty good idea. And all the camps now and the showcases, uh, you get to know these other elite athletes from these other programs. Exactly. You know, at, at least probably 15 or 20 of these guys out here on the field tonight met each other at Elite Five over the last couple of years, showcase that I run. But social media has really clamped down this whole world, made it a lot tighter. And, uh, you know, it's kind of weird. 
playing across from a guy you consider a friend. But you know what? That's what's beautiful about the game. You go out there, you compete like you hate each other until that final whistle blows, and then it's all a brotherhood, right? So St. Anthony's out there celebrating, but they got a ton of respect for the Iona guys across from them. So St. Anthony's, their 15th championship, and unlike the other 14, they get to extend their season now. They will play St. Francis of Buffalo up in Buffalo for the state championship next weekend. And, you know, it really does feel like this team has been building towards this and ha has known that this was their destiny that they're working towards. I think we looked on paper at the St. Anthony's team last year and said, wow, what a, what a missed opportunity. But this time around, they come out, finish it off the right way, pole to pole, really a, a dominant season with the exception of the one loss, St. Joe's of Montvale, New Jersey. And uh, they're going to go and aim to cap it off in a perfect way the weekend following Thanksgiving up in Buffalo against St. Francis. Vinny Spina, the defensive player of the game, and Dante Torres, the offensive player of the game. I think that one could be shared or at least uh, give a little piece of that to K.J. Duff. But Dante Torres, the offensive MVP, and now the trophy presentation. And here it is, the moment that they've been waiting years for at St. Anthony's. There, look at look at Ian Strong, man. He just he's like a little kid right now. He's so happy. And it really does age me every time I see these guys <laughs> take their helmets off. You know, with the helmet on, they look like they could be 30 years old, but the helmet comes off, and you realize these guys are just 15, 16, 17, 18, and enjoying. One of the best, best moments so far of their young lives. Something they'll remember forever. And now they bring it over to Friar Nation. What a moment this is. You can see Christian Oliva, number 70, lifting that trophy high. And you know the fight song is going to be coming up in a moment. Look at Oliva hoisting it up. What a moment for the Friars. In all that massive humanity, we're going to have the Mike's Underground post-game show where somewhere down there, John Perez will get one of the players of the game. And I think, I don't know, maybe not as, ex as exciting, I've got to think, if, if the player knows anything about how unbelievable Mike's Underground pizza is, that they not only win a championship, but they get a ridiculously great-tasting Wait, Dylan, pizza pizza. is there an incentive for winning the AAA title beyond Mike's Underground postgame? I mean, technically that trophy there I, is, but they've got to share. Like, that's like, that stays in the school. You can't eat a trophy, Dylan. Mike's Undergrounds is forever. Oh, yeah. So there's a pie down on the field, and I think we're going to split it here among Dante Torres. Looks like Ian Strong is down there. And KJ Duff as well. Let's send it down to John Perez for what will be a delicious post-game interview. Back here at Mitchell Field for the Mike's Underground Pizza post-game show. I'm here with our players of the game, Ian Strong, Dante Torres, K.J. Duff. will go down the line. Let's start with the defense, a very explosive Iona offensive team. You guys are able to keep them in check. And, Ian, I'm asking you first, what's it like to be a champion and what was the success for the defense today? It feels amazing to be a champion. And um, we can't thank anyone else besides Coach Minucci. He prepared us perfectly. And the rest of the coaching staff, too, I know you were very uh, laudatory to them. What can you say about what they've done for you guys? Yeah, through the Indies, everyone prepared us perfectly, and that's why we're champions today. I know these guys amaze you every day, but, I mean, yeah. when they're doing it on the biggest stage, what are you thinking? KJ with four touchdowns, Dante throwing him the ball, that's actually crazy. Dante, 509 yards, the championship game. I guess saving the best for last? Um, I couldn't do it without my teammates and my coaches, man. They make it really easy for me. I'm throwing short passes or I'm throwing long passes. They go up and get it. They make it super easy for me. I'm super excited to be a winner today. What's it like to win with this group? Um, special. Last year, a lot of these guys, last year we came off, same team, way different outcome. 
and it just we never forgot that and it feels amazing to finally get a sort of our revenge and now we're champs and kj for you he, he mentioned revenge i know that you guys had this circled on your calendar for a long time what does this mean for you oh, yeah like i told you earlier in the week we definitely didn't forget about that semifinal loss last year it's been on our minds all year yeah it really lit the fire under us and coming out here and just putting up 50 yeah, it just shows we haven't forgot just a quick question for you guys too best st anthony's team ever yes sir a hundred percent definitely 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 all right, and because of that, and thanks to our friends at Mike's Underground Pizza, you guys get a fresh slice over at Amityville. I know that we're keeping you guys healthy, so let's open that up. Ben Church and has it. There you go. Locations in Amityville. KJ's going to get a slice. We've got the hungriest guys here out on Long Island. So, guys, you can dig in. Congratulations once again to St. Anthony's. Ian, get in there as well. You guys can go back to your diet tomorrow. Warm. I <laughs> Amazing stuff there. You got a couple of, you got three hungry football players there, man. They will enjoy that pie. Mike's Underground Pizza, authentic New York style pizza. Mike's of Amityville.com. It is not to be beat. It is amazing stuff. What they do there with the Look at this, right in the middle, we got the pie. <laughs> Mike's Underground, so good. If you've had above ground pizza, you should try Mike's <laughs> Underground. And you, look, Dante's from North Massapequa, right? It's right next to Amityville. He oh, knew yeah. exactly what he was doing. The only reason he had 509 total yards today was because uh -oh. he knew he was working towards Mike's Underground. Oh, here we go. All the boys jumping in. And it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> if you were hoping for a slice, Pat Godfrey. Good luck, my friend. Well, you can do what others do. You can get it out to Mike's Underground. Oh, yeah. How come they had no offensive linemen or big linemen jumping in there? Come on, feed the big boys. <laughs> I think it would have been teasing them because any old lineman needs at least half a pie. Amazing scenes here from Mitchell Athletic Complex. What a day it was as well. Three champions have been crowned, the Xavier Knights, the Titans of Holy Trinity, and the St. Anthony's Friars. That'll do it here from Uniondale. Get yourself a slice, Joe Minucci. <laughs> I want to thank our entire Varsity Media crew, executive producer Ben Turchin, on graphics, Chris Sweeney, our sideline reporter, John Perez, our technical director, Brian Butler, bringing you all those great moving images, Ron, Pierre, Angelo, Caezo, Matt McCower Brown and Travis DeLuise, our fantastic statistician as well, John Baccio, from my broadcast partner, Pat Godfrey, Dylan Butler, thanking you for joining us from Mitchell Athletic Complex, and we'll see you next time on the Varsity Media Sports Network.